it's called the meeting to order of the Washington Center of the Unified Union School District on December 20th. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. I wanted to start the meeting today. Don't worry, there's no big speech. I just wanted to express gratitude for, for all our students for it's just this time of the year and just sharing, you know, for them sharing their life with us and sharing themselves with the teachers in our community. And uh, I'm also express gratitude and I'm grateful for our staff, and by staff I mean everybody, uh, for educating and supporting all our kids, especially this time of the year. And I know how stressful sometimes things can be, but thank you for being there for our kids. Grateful for all the parents and families, whether they're joining us remotely or here, uh, for supporting the students and for supporting all of us and supporting our staff. And finally, grateful for all of you here sitting with us uh, at the table. So thank you for your expertise and for your love for all the kids. And I'm looking forward to next year with all of you. So it's not quite happy new year, but I thought I'd do it right now instead of at the end of the So with, the, uh, with that and with the, you can and we can do this today, let's get started on the meeting. Uh, I have two adjustments to the agenda. One is I would like to add a, to move to point to two point four a student report and move and add a five point six to a point a clerk for our board. Do we have to accept this resignation? Uh, uh, we don't we don't have to because we can by them, but we will talk about it then and, but I would love a motion to accept the amended agenda. Five point six, a point four clerk. First of all, move. Second. Second. Second by Daniel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Let's get started. So reception of guests. Really see, we have uh, a strict time for comments. Uh, we're going to be discussing the agenda today. <coughs> Very clear from other, uh, there will be time right after agenda presentation for some public input. But if you have questions right now, uh, or you have some input for us not related to the budget, please raise your hand. any hands up. Please speak up if you're not. Can't raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on into our student report. Okay, so I'm going to use my phone, which we're not really supposed to do. Um, <laughs> sorry, Stephen and Jackson. <laughs> Even though it's not, I feel weird doing this. <laughs> but, so, some of you reached out um, and addressed Linnea and I about interest of coming to the school, which we really appreciate. And then we all left school that day because the <laughs> flood happened, or like was close to happening. Some places did flood, so we're gonna we did send out an email. We're gonna postpone it till I think it's gonna be the second week of January. Um, and we're gonna set up you guys with some kids. We're gonna set up you guys in some classes. Um, so we do apologize for that like inconvenience. We're really excited for you guys coming and then stuff happens, so it's all right. Um, so I have written sports are booming. So like that means sports are just, it's so exciting that everything's starting up. Everyone's excited to go out, go with a friend, go with the community, go out and just have fun, support the team, our basketball team, boys, varsity just had an insane game. They were down 16, and then they were tied, and then everyone, the student section was great. It was super exciting. Everyone was involved. It was super fun. Um, this week has been really slow. Um, break is next week that we all know is coming up, so everyone's feeling a bit jittery. Everyone wants to be done, but everyone's also finishing like some tests. We have, I know I have my 
English class writing essay in class tomorrow, so everyone's kind of finishing up with their semester, or yeah, their semester, and they're figuring out what's next and what is everyone doing. Um, with what is everyone doing, most of our seniors are starting to hear information about schools and trying to figure out what their next plans are. So that's been super exciting to hear about. And our senior lounge has yet to be shut down. We are going so strong. <laughs> Jess got us a little treat the other day because we haven't <laughs> shut it down yet. So that's been great. Um, the Spanish students are getting presentations from a Spain student, which is actually my host sister, who was here for two weeks. So Lisa gave us an approval, which was great. Um, so she's been giving presentations and speaking Spanish to all our students, and they've been able to practice. I've heard a lot of great feedback about just how it's exciting to be able to speak the language you've been learning to someone who speaks the language fluently. And that's kind of it. Like I said, like everything's kind of starting, but at the same time, everything's kind of coming to a close because we have a new year coming up. We have a new semester. Linnea's at her hockey game in Rutland tonight, so she could not make it. Um, and then I'm off to soccer practice in a couple minutes. But that's kind of it. Do you guys have any questions? Or can I have a raise of hand of who is interested in coming the week of January, the second week of January? Lovely. So I'd love to come. But, if you can, you, like, you know what I mean. So I just I I want to be sure that <laughs> no, you no, all know yeah, yeah. that we really. If whoever can come, yeah. who's like logistically able to wait, will you pay like that raise of high? Then I can see. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Wow, that's so great. Okay. <laughs> So more information, oh, more informations to come. Um, we appreciate you guys being interested. We appreciate you guys listening, and hopefully that's gonna be great. I think I sent out the email saying our student body can't name two members, and when they do, it's Linnea and I. So I think that's kind of an issue. So hopefully this is gonna bring more of a more of a connection versus a divide. Because mm -hmm. you guys want to be a part, and the students want to be a part of this. So, I do thank you guys for showing interest, and I cannot wait for you guys to come see the school. Mm -hmm. That is a student report. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions for Willow? I promise I plan to ask this question before you started breaking the rules. Um, but how, how are, now it's been a couple of months, how, how are things going with this new cell phone policy? That, <laughs> it's been well. I think, I think it was honestly the right direction for, it just was getting out of hand and a lot of kids are like fully respecting that the teachers are enforcing it. So like at this point it's just every day. It, at first it was everyone just like really nervous about getting a striker here and there, but at least in my classes everyone's respectful of the rule and just like the text will be there after class and like you you truly don't need your phone. Sorry to any student on the line doing this. But yeah, so that's kinda it. It's been good. It's been good. I think it's been helpful. For me at least. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So with that we're gonna welcome Jody. She's here to do a presentation for us on the budget for the central for, to, for our dear central Vermont area center. Mark, are you? Superintendent Director at the Central Vermont Career Center, which is currently housed in Barrie at Spalding High School. And this presentation is one that I give every year to all of our Sunday School Boards. And if you saw last year's, it's based off the same slideshow with new photos from this year's students and also some new information because our board actually has goals this year and more things that I can share, which is exciting. And I'm truly thankful that the floor is on my board and I also understand that maybe in March she might be asking one of you to step on in her place 
because she's taken on some other roles here in the state. So be thinking about that. <laughs> you can go ahead. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So it's, that's fine. <laughs> it's, this has both the Career Center School District's vision and mission and also the, the Career Center itself, which are very much the same in that we're building students to be engaged members of the workforce and our communities so that they can continue supporting all of us in making sure that our electricity works and cooking great food for us. And, providing all the services and supports that we need to keep going every day in our lives. Go ahead. So we have three goals, and I think the third one is probably every school board's goal. But the first one is long-term planning, and this one is starting to get really exciting. Um, before I got to the Career Center, there were two different groups that were meeting. There was a governance committee that is the one that got us to this new school district. But then there was also a re-envisioning committee, and they did some work with two different architects to try to plan what would the Career Center look like if we could actually house all the kids that apply. We have over 267 at last count first round applicants for next year. We don't have that many seats. So one of the things we're looking to do is to expand to meet the needs of our, our students, but also the workforce across the state and in our region. And so one of our goals is to build that new center because there is not space to renovate Spalding High School to give us the space that we need. So the facilities committee is looking for fall of 2028. Our architects are thinking more fall of 2029. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Go ahead. The second one is just making sure that our, our programs are equitable, they're safe, and they're rigorous. And this is something that's a little different or that people might not know about career centers is that we are required to offer industry recognized credentials or credits in every program. If, if you were here last year, you heard that already. Next year, the number of IRCs or credits are going up for every program. So we either have to have multiple industry recognized credentials or we have to have six credits in every program. We have one of our biggest program has or the most credits that a program has is I think it's 30 by the time they're done with us for one year. So we range from three to 30 credits um, in our programming, or we have industry recognized credentials like uh, apprenticeship plumbing level one, for example, apprenticeship electrical level one. So all of these things, and we're gonna have to up those expectations for our students next year and the access that they have. So we're, we're working on that rigorous piece as part of our goal. And then the third one is that community engagement. You have a ton of people online tonight, and, so, okay, most of them are your staff, so I guess I don't have to count them, but we, yeah, we don't. Um, Flora could tell you that if we get a guest, it's pretty, Orca is usually our, our esteemed guest of the night, and so, how do we get our, our community engaged? We're 18 town district. How do we get folks to come and, and see what we're doing and get involved in that? So that's we have one some of our ideas goals. for next year. So we do have some ideas. Around school. Oh, you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> open house was amazing. Open house was amazing. House was amazing. Yeah. It was. We, we exceeded our mm -hmm. previous record. It had over 550 folks come through open house, mm -hmm. which was great. Only seven of them went to the design and fab down at Granite Museum, though. So. Mm -hmm. Wait. It wasn't enough time to do everything. That's true. Really that's true. Wasn't. Okay, so we have to expand our yeah. hours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's good. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, one of the charges that I've kind of been given by the board and, and sort of taken on is developing and implementing a full day educational program. We have full day CTE. It's four hours a day, 1,200 minutes a week. That's a requirement for a full day in CTE. But we could offer academics beyond that. We were talking about doing that for next school year, but then we also recognize that there's a need because we have so many students applying that maybe we can open up a program that could take in a few more students. And what is our real goal? If it's career and tech ed, then that's where we have to focus primarily and move towards that full day with academics. And so we are pushing that out to go with the new building and building up to it over the next few years. 
So that's a work in progress. It will come, hopefully, because that's one of my goals. And I think that's probably why we keep pushing it out, because Florida keeps telling me I get to stay for longer. So I have to keep staying until I get that goal, at least. We want to increase student access. We had 408 total applicants last year, and we took 208 of those students. And part of that offset is that 70 or 80 students apply for auto. We can only have 16 in the program. Some of the programs are capped. But there's still a lot more students that could be accessing and getting the skills that they're interested in that we're not currently serving. So we want to increase that access, and we want to make sure that our students are really prepared. There was a few board meetings that I went to last year where folks gave us <coughs> some scenarios where students were great, they were prepared, they went into the workforce, and then other students that they knew about that they worked there for a couple of months and it didn't work out, and were they really prepared? So we're trying to make sure that, yes, they are prepared as we move on. So again, I already talked about we want to address the issue of turning away so many students. That was nearly half. We want to improve our access to students that struggle with attending or thriving outside of us. So a lot of our students will talk about in our end of year survey just how wonderful the community is for them. And it's the first time that maybe they've enjoyed school. I hear that from parents all the time. And many of them get back on a bus and go back to their Sunday school. Or they get in their car and they drive away and they don't come back to their Sunday school when they should be for a class. And then maybe they're pulled from our programs halfway through the year because they're not ready, to, they're not gonna graduate if they don't. And so we wanna make sure that students are coming to us and getting what they need, but also getting what they need in your buildings. So again, the mission, it's very similar to the district mission, and I, I just love the tagline, so it was a great opportunity to remind you that the CBCC is education that works. Good. Um, this slide is exactly the same and unchanged. The link document in there, and Megan, if you haven't, you can share that, um, the whole thing with everybody so that they can get into that. That's basically our budget planning process, and so it's month by month, what do we do, and it's this year's version of that. So you can see when we started thinking about it. One of the wonderful things that Flora told me this year that I hadn't been doing was that I needed to take off my superintendent hat and put on my director hat and make a wish list. Mm -hmm. um, that wish list would have included full day with academics next year, which was a 25.8% increase on our budget. We only have a $4 million budget, so it's not as big as the one for Washington Central, but that was too much. That was too much. Um, and so it was good to just try to separate the two roles that I play and think about, okay, if, if I'm just the director, what do I want for our kids? What do I want for us to be able to offer? And then to step back into that superintendent role and say, what's realistic for us? And then to look at the resources and, and all the things that we need to keep the current programming strong. So at the November board meeting, uh, the board gave me these parameters to look towards a future full day with academics program, to look at opportunities to collaborate with my sending schools, and Stephen's already reached out a couple of times about ways we might be able to do that, which is great. Consider configuration changes that might realize program quality improvements to serve more students, and that increase in the budget can only be between 16 and 18 percent, which was pretty generous. But, and this just clarified that the numbers that we were receiving then made it like, yes there was just no option in what yeah. we were lending mm -hmm. we considered at our last meeting can we just cross that we were trying to just uh, yeah. stay with the information that michelle has given us right which was looking really and that was before terrible. we got the um base rate mm -hmm. the, yes. the, the, the anticipated rate. base rate yeah. right so that really actually helped us out Go ahead. So these are sort of the same things. The things that we're thinking about are the class sizes, how much space we have, and how can we maximize that. We made some changes in where our classrooms are. So my medical professions class, for example, <coughs> switched rooms from last year to this year, and we were able to get more students into it because of that ice for space. So looking at things like that to meet the needs, and then working towards that new facility. Um, getting the, the state base rate was helpful, because that's up a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's accurate. And then, of course, you guys know that the insurance and benefits are increasing, impacting all of our budgets. Go ahead. 
We also um, just settled last week our first round of negotiations mm -hmm. for a teacher contract. So we have a collective bargaining agreement that did bring about increased salaries, um, but we survived our first time of that. So it's really good to be able to celebrate and say we have that. The health insurance increases our facilities. We pay a facilities use fee to the Berry District. And so that continues to increase. And then small line items for purchasing of lumber, um, other materials for our programming, which is a little different than classrooms here, except for your metals and woods, of course. Um, we also are expecting that our FTEs are going to flatline before we get the new building. Because um, we have pretty much been building up to capacity. So you can see that there was some pretty significant increase in our FTEs, which is our six semester average of students. It's a little different than how you do that. Uh, but pretty soon we're going to be at the top level of that and we're not going to see that continued increase. This slide was in there last year. Um, a difference is when you look at this year, you'll see that design and fabrication, it went from, in its first year, it had three students. It finished that year with two students. This year, it currently has five students. My instructor just resigned, so we're hoping to replace um, for the rest of this year. But we've zeroed it out because we have only a co-op student, a student who's currently in the program, interested in co-op next year, applied for that. So no students that are interested in that program for next year. Meanwhile, we've included welding uh, because we don't have a teacher, we don't have that program yet, and we have over 30 applicants for next year. So we, we've made a little shift there. Go ahead. This slide is exactly the same as last year because I couldn't get all the numbers from our sending schools yet, or not our sending schools, but our um, colleagues in CTE. What I can tell you is it's going to be pretty much the same look to the graph. Patricia Hannaford Center is going to be just under 30,000, 29 something next year for tuition. Southwest is going to be 27,7. Uh, Stafford is just over 21,000. And River Bend, which is behind us, is going to be 17,6 next year. So, pretty much the same trends for the cost of those. And so, we're going to stay pretty much in the same spot, which means we're quite reasonable. Go ahead. So our tuition is anticipated to be 19,423 next year. We won't know that for sure until probably December 31st at 9 p.m. Whenever we get the numbers from the state that tell us, and then we're um, required to provide our tuition information to our sending districts within about 15 days of that. I can't remember the exact date, but within the 15 days. And so how it happens is that we get some payments towards our salary, we get salary assistance, we get a few other pieces. We do have some grants that um, help us with our, our funding, like Perkins this year, is it was 250000 and then they reallocated some funds that weren't spent last year, so we got about 300000 this current fiscal year from Perkins. And so once all of those and the on behalf payments come from the state directly to us, the remaining part charged to our sending schools is 8058 for each student, which is an 11.9% increase, much lower than what we had originally thought was gonna happen. And that again is based on your six semester average. So it could be that you have 40 kids with us, but your average is 36, or it could be that you have 36 with kids with us and your average is 40. It could, might not be accurate, but it keeps it from going really high or really low any single year. This is just a graph. Maybe you do this with your budget too to kind of look at where are the funds going. And so thankfully, most of it is going into that education. We wanted to highlight also how much is going towards the current facility and how that might be better spent in our own new building eventually. Yeah, we're putting into our capital plan. That's we right. Part. We are putting some funds under the capital plan. So that's great. These are some of the revenue sources I was just talking about. Mark, you can go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's okay. And here's your opportunity to ask some questions if you have them. <clears throat> Will your expansion um, also increase the number of um, automotive students that you can have, or will that? Hopefully, it, it really depends on how we do that. If we build it big enough so that we can have two programs at once, 
or if we have a rotation where we can have first years and second years, that might help in. Uh, well, a lot of the students that apply for automotive also are interested in welding, mm -hmm. so they may be able to shift out a little bit um, when we have that. Judy, um, you're talking about full day academics? Mm -hmm. Does that mean a student wouldn't go back and forth? Correct. They would, they would come here, come to our center, and come back. So At the end of the day, to go home, not for classes. Okay, so what does it mean to have uh, full day academics? Like it means that whatever they so this is another complication, right? But if I look at all of the graduation requirements across my study schools, it means making sure that I embed or provide that instruction within our day so that students can still meet their graduation requirements without having to come back and take a class here. Because I think you can speak to this, Stephen, but it disrupts the schedule at any of our sending schools. And so I think my students come back here and they have a special class of US history that's just CBCC students, for example. In other sending schools, the one that I'm attached to, their third block starts half an hour before my classes end. So kids are running to the cafeteria, grabbing food, and going to their class late every single day. And so trying to mitigate those pieces where it's not really equitable for students and giving them everything they need when they're with us. Okay. So that's a goal I have. So would that then prevent travel back and forth? Would, would students be basically located at the, the um, career center and have all of their academic and technological needs met? That's the goal. That's so the that goal. won't okay. be happening for quite a few more years still, okay. unfortunately. Now, now I'm going to ask you a budget question. Yeah. Where are those students counted for funding purposes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're counted here. Okay. And some of the money for their tuition comes directly to me. Mm -hmm. And the rest comes here. And then gets paid to me, some of it, in tuition. So it depends on what your tuition cost is versus mine. Okay. Would that still be true if you became a full time <laughs> Full that would still be true okay. for right now. For now. Yeah. For well, now. I'm so about the future. Yeah, the future we don't know. This is probably going to be a CTE year in the legislature, and one of the recommendations that came out of the um, study that was done by APA, and I can't remember what that APA stands for, out of Colorado, was that there needed to be a new funding system for tech ed. So, okay. and interim Secretary of State is very interested in pushing that this year. And so we may have a funding formula that changes. But right now, it would stay the same regardless of whether we have those students all day long or if we have them part of the day. OK, thank you. Yeah. I was going to ask about uh, faculty. And you alluded a couple times to challenges with, with uh, filling positions or not having a welding instructor, right. for example. I was curious if um, the new collective bargaining agreement you think that will change that? And also, how do you compare to the other CTE uh, um, centers in the state? Depends. If you know. it, de it really depends. Yeah. And yeah, it's complicated because the CTEs across Vermont are so different. So some of them are, have two hour programs. Mm -hmm. And so their students are there for two hours in the morning. And then they go back to their standing school. And then they have another batch of students that come in for two hours in the afternoon and go back to. So it's, it's very different. Or there's a private. St. J Academy has some CTE. So it's very different across. And there are some that we're comparable to now, and some that we could still, none of us equal to written accounting. Right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of tenure for the faculty, that's that, the, that the structure of the school day at the Career Center affects your like ability to mm -hmm. hold. I mean, I'm specifically thinking about whether other career centers have an easier or a harder time than Central Vermont in, in I think to. we all struggle a little bit with filling, and I think it's more about when we hire a teacher for a program, it's usually not the same type of background that your teachers have. And so they're coming directly from industry, where now they might be making a, a good amount of money to come into teaching where there's great benefits, right? But there may not be the same level of money. There's also not the same hours or some of the other things they might be dealing with in the industry. But my teachers, if they're brand new, they're coming from industry. They now have to teach a class of students 
and they have to take their classes at the same time because they have to work, they, they do a teacher apprenticeship program mm -hmm. and they have to take classes in the first three to four years to get their teaching license. Mm -hmm. So the, they've got the double whammy of being first time in a classroom with kids, trying to figure out behavior management and curriculum and all of the systems that we have for collecting attendance and putting your curriculum together and, and all those things and they have to take these classes for less pay than if they stayed on but, the job. But with our new agreement, at least we were able to make some... We're uh, close the gap. Yeah, close the gap. So industry will be paid fair, you know, because sometimes industry comes to us and has 20 years of experience, but that doesn't translate to 20 years of teaching, mm -hmm. right? And right. There, so, so that was... It was a hard conversation, but I needed a conversation. So now maybe we will be able to attract more people in industry because it's important to have that experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I went to the uh, open house yeah. with a coworker of mine, and we're in the trades, and it was really fun. And I just want to say how good uh, it felt to be there. I mean, the, the, the all the students were super excited, all the faculty were super excited. And it was it was electric in there, it truly was. Um, so I just want to say, you're doing some really great work. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is. I loved working here when I worked here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Observing classrooms here was nothing like the classes I get to observe there. So it it's is, pretty wild. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I think you have a question from someone oh. in the room. Go ahead. <coughs> I don't see him. Who's it? Well, okay. Can you? Hear you can stop sharing. Jody, can you hear me? I can. Yeah. It's Brittany. Um, my my question was uh, just about special education services at the career center, and um, it, is differentiation built into the programming over there? I just know a lot of times. Um, students on plans are really interested in that hands-on tech learning. And I just want to see how their needs are met when, you know, at the tech center. Yeah, so there are times when we cannot differentiate. Um, we have to meet industry-recognized credentials and we have to meet like OSHA 10 for students to go into our workshops. So there are times when we cannot do that. What we can do is offer supports and I think U32 is really special in that way because we get one of your case managers, special educators, twice a week. And so she is on site, knows what's going on, and is able to help students and support them in those things to help get them through that. We also are not an LEA, so we're not responsible for the services per se, but we do provide the supports necessary. So I know that I have a count, um, special ed coordinator, and she is often sitting with students and making sure that she's giving them whatever they need as far as their plan to like if it's reading um, the assessment for them or working through the math for them and with them, not for them. And so there are things that we're able to do and there are also some pretty rigorous standards we're held to. And so we have to be careful about who's coming in at their program and if they're ready yet. It doesn't mean that it's not available for them ever, but we need to make sure that students are ready to be successful. We don't want to have them come in thinking that it's going to be a great hands-on experience, and then realize, oh, I also have to know electrical code. Because we can't, there's not a lot we can do about that. It's not on tape. You have to know how to thumb through that code book and find what you're looking for. And you, you can use the code book on the assessment at the end for that apprenticeship license, but <laughs> you need to know it to be able to do that. And so it's hard in some cases to meet the needs of all students, and we don't have the same quite requirements as that. We are held to different standards for those IRCs and college credits that we have to offer. And if our numbers start to go down, then we lose funding. So we have to always be building up and supporting kids. So one of the things that I want to do as we build up to that full day center with academics is to make sure that we start at foundations at the ninth grade level mm -hmm. so that we bring kids in and start teaching those technical pieces like what how do you read a manual for example how do you understand what this piece is telling you if it's a title or a heading and how do you get to that next part and how do you take this test and understand how to look at these questions or hear these questions if someone's reading it to you to, to be able to access it I also want to be very clear that when students apply to our programming there should be absolutely no evidence that they're on a plan 
So we, we do not get those in advance. We do not, while my special ed coordinator should be able to talk to your case managers and make sure that they know what the expectations are or what students need to be at a base to be successful in our program in advance of anyone applying, we don't get any of that information because our decisions are not based on that. And that should never come into play. Does that help? That does. Thank you, Jody. I, I appreciate that and I'm excited for the future where they're working in ninth grade to really, you know, start yeah. all the skills they need. So I'm excited for the future. Thank you. Me too. Thank you, Brittany. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to... You don't want me to take all the time? <laughs> <laughs> keep going, Jody. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> this is really exciting. I think that one last thing that we had in our presentation is just to remember to, to vote and to ask right. for your for your uh, career center doesn't it doesn't get mailed to to you because it's 18 towns that would have to go petition if you can just imagine that to send to and mail remember their ballots. that when you're it's voting a, for our budget it's, it's already, not up above and beyond your budget it's already, yeah it's right. baked in those eight thousand dollars <laughs> so to the audience can you say that again out loud <laughs> so when our ballot goes out separate from all of yours and to all of our 18 towns. And this year it's going to have on it the one Washington Central at-large person. They are, they are on a one-year term, so we'll be looking for a three-year term person to get elected. And so it'll have that, and then it'll also have our total budget amount to support the Career Center moving forward next year. And when you vote for that, you are, you are supporting the Career Center budget, which is already embedded into your own. So it's not money above and beyond for taxpayers. It's not extra. So it's not a separate budget. It's within our Correct. It's budget. within it, but okay. you vote on it separately. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. So now that we are all excited, yeah. let's get excited for our own budget. Megan? <laughs> all right. A lot of budget tonight. <laughs> okay, so this is our second budget meeting to remind you where you are in the process. Um, this is the meeting before the meeting where you would adopt your final budget for warning. Um, and then that's in preparation for our annual meeting and our town meeting day vote. Um, what, this just to remind you what we're doing tonight, this is what the board asked of administration. Um, one was to essentially give more information about instructional program changes, the things that we proposed last meeting, um, overview of what the service delivery looks like with proposed changes, and then some breakdown of cost implications of changes because the, the November budget talks about FTE and not dollars associated. And, and then, then as you always do in the December meeting, you'll get some updates, updates because there's information that we have now that we didn't have then. then. This, this is, we, we will try to make this as accessible as possible. There's a lot of complexity to the funding system, especially in, in, in a good year there is. And this year it's even more complex. So that is what we're here to do. The full leadership team will be part of this, including some that aren't actually here. So we'll bring them to you virtually. And by request, this will be a multimedia presentation. Um, and, and again, these first few are just, I think, I think they're good grounding reminders. Um, this is the engagement timeline that the board's been operating under. So we are at this point where the board is digging into its conversations and taking all this input into consideration. And, and these, these are, are the budget parameters, parameters that you provided for administration. Um, you did make a decision to eliminate your um, original A parameter that was to keep the impact under the inflation rate. And you removed that parameter once you saw the baseline. This is a reminder, one of your parameters is to use these through three lenses or to ask administration to use these three lenses. So when we look at our budget building, we are looking at education quality and evidence-based practice. We're looking at how we distribute resources across the system and we are paying attention to student need. And 
These are kind of the operating principles that um, administrators used as we entered this um, budget season. Um, we know the biggest priority is to be able to provide programming within the configuration that we have currently. Um, we want uh, different, different from last year, year we wanted individual, individual schools to be able to make the recommendation that, that was based on the needs of their building and gave direction to start by, we know we have revenue loss of our VASR funds. So at the building level, what was that revenue loss and make a proposal that um, responds to that and um, pay attention to enrollment. So respond to enrollment changes while staying within ed quality standards. This was how our principals, Our principals approached, approached the work. Okay, okay. So, so we are, are going to talk about that first, that first piece, piece, the instructional program changes. changes. So, so first, first, you've seen this slide, slide before. before. Um, what are, what are education quality standards? standards? Both, Both the current, current and the proposed are linked in here for folks that want to look in advance. Um, but, but why, why do we use ed quality? Um, they, they are the Vermont, Vermont law. They are Vermont's, Vermont's requirements for appropriately resourced schools um, with a focus on quality. They, they give us consistent guidelines so that we have something that's objective. Um, and, and for us, in order to meet the needs of our students and achieve our core beliefs, we need to be adequately staffed. So we're going to speak to this chart a little bit. Um, it, might, might be easier to see on the printout. Um, for, for those, those on the screen, screen as, as usual, the slides will be put up on the website. website. These, These are, uh, this is the chart you see, is how our staffing compares to education quality standards. standards. And, and this slide in the highlighted areas speaks to what it will look like with the proposed changes. changes. Um, and this, so, so highlighted, in highlighted in green and highlighted in yellow, yellow is one, one piece of it. But this, this is to demonstrate that we did ensure that we stay within ed quality standards when we made these proposals. Um, a couple of notes about this slide. Um, the, the counseling row, so education quality standards, when they develop that ratio, uh, the 1 to 300 and 1 to 200, that includes more than just school counselors. Uh, by design. It includes school counselors, it includes social workers if you have them, it includes an SAP, which is a substance abuse professional, it includes school-wide behavior system um, supports, so it includes more than counselors. When we show you these ratios in a typical budget season, we just look at the counselor number, but it doesn't paint a really good picture of all the other supports in the building, and as you'll see when principals speak to their model, um, there, there are, are more than just counselors that provide these supports. These supports. So, so the highlighted areas, so for example in Berlin, Berlin that number includes the counselors, counselors but also a school-wide behavior support staff and um, the additional BCBA, school-wide behavior project serve in Calais. This includes a school-wide behavior professional that they currently have. Um, Dodi is their school counselor, that is what that includes. Um, East Montpelier, that calculation, that calculation includes their school-wide behavior professional. professional. Same with Romney, uh, which, which is a support staff. staff. And then and at, the at the high school, school there, is there is also a social worker, worker and in the proposed model, the addition, addition of a substance abuse social. professional. So just, so just alerting, alerting you to why that row looks, looks different than it looked last time. time. This, this is a district look at the changes. changes. When, when we go, go into a little bit more detail, detail each building summary, summary will show you the individual building impacts, but in case it is helpful, you did look at it this way last year. Um, across the district, these proposals include reductions in classroom teacher, ESP, that support staff, school nurse, library media, school counselor, and then additions in SAP for the high school and BCBA behavior systems at Berlin. Both of those would be offset by grant funds. So that's just a high level summary. And as we just do this, administrators are going to jump in and speak to their slide when we get to the um, board operations later in the agenda and you're discussing. There are also be available to answer questions that the board has. And I think Jen's up first. 
so so the first thing we want to share with you is a little more information, information about the recommendation to combine frequency at rung and to combine the at rung and Jody. And, and, um, and, and fundamentally, in the early education for our young kids who are three, four, and five, we want to offer a robust program so that they play lots of kids and learn how to be a school. To play lots of kids and learn how to be a school, you need lots of kids. And, and, um, and so, so right, right now, now our projected enrollment for three-year-old across Golden Town is 12. And our projected three-year-old enrollment across Golden Town is 8. So for her combination of 20 kids, those are technically three grade levels. So, so we want to combine, combine those two weekly programs, programs into one, one program. program. We'd, we'd run, run two, two sessions, sessions and then we'd pair with our community connections. Another, Another important, important part of the proposal, proposal is the fact that, that many of our families want to wrap around care. And when we're offering lots of programs across schools, we can't find enough staff people to meet our families' desires and needs around wrap around care. So we want to offer that to our families and 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 our families or, or we sort of patch things, things together, together especially, especially in the program, 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 program we don't, we don't have, have a good number, number of students. students. There are also, there are also times, times when we've had some staff available, um, but we don't have enough families to give them the families in general to come from, and then we're not going to offer an aftercare for one or two kids and fund that with an employee. So, so we, we want to put together, it does result in some, some budget uh, savings, savings, and that is because due to student needing and anticipating being able to reduce one of their professionals for free pre-K um, at that point more to do FTE. So uh, uh, within our, our agency of human services, those are still those like some regulations, regulations as well. Next, Next slide. slide. Similarly, in kindergarten, we want our kids to meet lots of playmates, have, have lots, lots of experiences, and, and, um, and be exposed to diversity of thought, of thought and experience and learn to be in school. school. Our projected enrollment next year, year for her and her next year is seven, and our projected enrollment next year is six. six. Um, um, those those classes are too small, small to, to offer, offer high quality instruction. So we want to propose bringing them together. together. That, that would um, um, result in a 1.0 FTE reduction um, in, 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 in those classes. classes. I, I want to be really clear that, that we, we would be bringing we would be bringing to recommend recommendations to you regardless of budgetary area because they are the right things to do for kids and the right things to do for our families. We, we are, are still, still uh, exploring, exploring options in terms of logistics and location, location. Because, because we have lots of things to explore, explore primarily uh, transportation and then, then classroom space, space, the size of space, 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 the capacity, and, and other impacts. So, so none, none of those decisions have been made, made, but it is our strongest recommendation. So could we be saving or not have to do with this point? Because our assumption is that transportation would not result in, we will look at it for sure and look at room lengths, but we do not anticipate having to add routes, which is the only way we would go up in transportation costs. Okay, so are there any increases, especially increases, just as the budget function, are there any net savings or these only based on the average of savings? That is the staff reduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's absolutely But meaning that net more than any other increased cost from combining the if there are any. We don't anticipate there being any. Yep. No, no, we have actually, actually excuse me, and I went back to our current that we've been <coughs> looking at routes, and, and some of our routes actually already go, go like one, one route goes right by the other school anyway. So, so we think that we can factor all of that into the mix when we make those decisions. Yeah, thank, thank you for that question. And then the number. My question is about projected enrollment and what numbers that would be based on. So, so um, our, our teachers and our admin assistants, assistants and our principals, our principals do, do a lot of work trying to figure out who's out there. Out there. We, we look at our absence to six numbers. We look at the birth records. We get the bid plan. We, we make phone calls. calls. We look, we look, look at the town records. records. It's always a bit of a, you know, a, a, a move, right? It's a moving target. We do our best. But even if it's the best effort, it went done at 6.9 times. Those are the numbers that we're expecting. So it's not just based on the school's free show. And then the other question is, 
if you, if have, you have an afternoon, afternoon session, session and they're and accessing the meeting connections in the morning, morning, morning to create a full day, day. day. Or they, or they access, access the transportation, transportation to the option, option, option to access, access transportation, transportation morning, like, like a morning. morning. Yeah, yeah when, 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 when we're, we're able, able to do the wrap around, we can add transportation as well. Yeah. 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 Do you, you anticipate more, more families um, signing, signing up for prepaid because, because they have access to community connections? I would, I would say it would be great. Simple. I mean, we've yeah. had conversations. I would say, but I know anecdotally it is uh, when, when we can't offer full day around, it becomes something that's inacceptable for that family. And, and I know that we've had families that, family that, that would like, like to come to our programs, and they can't yeah. because we haven't, we haven't been able to offer wrap around. So that, yeah. yeah, I would agree. I think the consensus word gets out, and then now that we have had one year under us, we would. Four days, four days, we would, we would have offered a Monday or air, except we didn't have enough to sign up for it. Um, but even four, four full days, days at their, their local school, school is more than, than what the sex have had previously. So, so I think, think um, the, the two, two communities, communities come coming together and offering five, five days, days wrap around, around care and transportation, transportation I, think I think more people will. So, so just a couple of questions. Question. One, um, do, we do we have, have an anticipation of what, what the following year might, might bring, bring in, terms in terms of combining, combining those? those? You know, you know what I mean? mean like, like, is it going to size, size out? out? Mm -hmm. We have a number, and we're also continuing as well. We don't know what the degree 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 overall might make. Like. So all those things are a moving target, but yes, we have a moment projection. The young the youngest kids are always, are always the hardest, the hardest because, because, right? right? But we do our we best, best to on top of things. I just, you I just, know, in terms of, and also in terms of configuration, as, as we've been talking different configurations, configurations and, and as we're, we're trying, trying to figure, figure out, out how do we make these decisions, decisions. It, you, know, you know, 15, 15 20, 20 years, years ago, ago, we had only, only we were kind of consolidated, consolidated programs, programs and then we worked hard, hard to put, put them out into the schools. And so as I look at it, life has changed. The, the world, world has changed, changed. So, so of course, course that's why we see these changes. changes. But, but as we're considering configuration changes, changes it's, 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 it's just, just there's, there's a lot, lot that's, that's bubbling here as, as to this pendulum swinging, swinging back, back and, and forth. forth. Um, um, and, and so, so it's, it's, it's I'm trying, trying to figure out my question. question. Um, but, but you know, and it's really it's about. I just, I just want to be sure, sure that, that as we consider, consider our configuration, configuration we, we that, that becomes, becomes part, part of it, that we that also, we also know, know that it's, it's a moving, moving target, target all the time. time. The other the thing, thing, too, I want to, I, I really appreciate that, that we have, have these, these, this partnership with, with uh, community, uh, community connection. connection. We, we have, have to understand, though, it's a full school day, but it's not a full day for working parents. And so I just want us to be clear around, around that, that because, because I know a number, number of parents, parents who um, uh, this is very, very helpful, helpful but, it but it doesn't take them until the end of the work, work day, so there's still, still some adjustment, adjustment shift that has to happen. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Okay, okay so, so Kat, Kat was, was not able, able to be with us today, today but she, she did project, project herself. herself. <laughs> so I'm going to take a second to do this to make sure that it does look like it's on the screen. I'm going, I'm going to start, start hitting, hitting play, play and, and I'm hoping that those on the screen, if we find out that you can't, can't hear, hear um, raise your hand, hand or, do or do something so that we know that. Okay, okay so, so I'm clicking, clicking play. play. No, no one can hear that. It's because, because my sound, sound is off, so it's off. So I think you're going to mute the owl. Yep. Thank you. As long as they can hear. And I'll, and I'll just turn, turn my volume up so the folks in the room here.
because it's not like you thought. Yeah, the owl's not like you thought. And you, sh well, because. Did you stop sharing and get yes, sharing share, share that with me and I'll play it up here? Yes. Yeah. Can you turn the owl on yes. so they know we're working on it? We're working on it. I'll turn my sound off. And I will share the video with you. It's actually linked in the slides you have, but. Oh. But here, if it's easier, I'll just email you. Oh, you're waiting for the chat? Which one are you? Host? Uh, oh. Your owl. <laughs> there you go. So far, no hands raised. So I think we're good. And I'm excited to talk a little bit more about the rationale behind the decisions that I made on this slide that you'll see in the perspective about the
always have the money. And, and one, one of the things that, that has always, always told me, me thinking about, about how you make partner decisions, is, is if, if I, I use data points and then sources of information, best practice, to ensure that I have some integrity behind any decisions I make. The piece that, that I thought was important, important to, to know that my staff heard some of the comments, comments that I made in the last board, board meeting, meeting, and then they still still walked away, not really understanding my, my rationale. rationale. So I, I, want, I want to add some 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 talking some points here for, for all of you. What, what I was, was charged, charged with, with all of our ridiculous charges for the first time this Wednesday season was just to talk about. Um, how we were going to approach a lot of the best funds. If you think that the last budget and use the best funds in the we used it to increase the MTE in that intervention. In the intervention, each year we would have intervention and school nursing and school counseling. One of the things that you don't see on the slide is the intervention. That is because I made a decision. If I have to do something, I have to prioritize uh, the part that made the most sense to me based on all of the data that I have available to me. And my data sources, I need. I have access to our users using the data. I have access to our community data to understand what is the expertise that we have in our building. This is based on our staff members who are really endorsed. I have access to. I 
assessment as well. I want to make sure, sure that it's really clear, clear that, that we have, have a, a this, this is already, already something that is that very nice this year. Our library is an integrationist who's awesome. It is already functioning at about 0.6 FTE and making the library program work. And, and the rest of the time is spent, spent um, um, as, as a new user, duly endorsed um, educator, educator, teaching teaching fourth grade, grade in, in core, core academics in math and literacy. We have, we have an extremely large class size for Calis by most no standards, actually 26 students, students in our three core class. In order for students to get their needs met, the the um. Like library like text and transitions per day, day, every single day, 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 to be to be the fourth grade with the same math teacher, and, and we're working out really well. well. However, this is budget this budget is really important for us to separate, to separate what do we budget, budget for, for intentionally, and, and when, when do we make, make a choice, choice or decision to, to pivot it, to to benefit, benefit um, or address another number of things that we need. We did that last year with the library tech. And it didn't work like library tech at all. I'm just saying we're working to adopt the right FTE for library tech. And think about what are the other ways to support students. I think I want to end on one of the points that I made at the beginning. Cal is the most mobile. Take on, on a district, just disproportionate amount of these resources, resources allotted to Washington Central because, because we are a small school. And I'm so grateful for all the support that our board and our meeting have always given in Calais and other small schools in Washington, Washington Central. Central. And I recognize, I recognize also, also that the Nessie sometimes that come on at the cost of others. We have others, other schools in our district doing so wonderful, wonderful work and they're and doing, doing it with, with a less than proportionate. proportionate. Um, um, out of our, our resources. resources. And, and that, that does is not system that we need. Um, I, I think that it's important that we work, work in, in a way that we do the needs, needs and the budget. budget. It, it is, is forward thinking, thinking as, as we move into, into the this season of strategic planning, vision building, building, and, and um, Aligning our, our budget, budget with our, with our values and the values of our community. Thank, thank you. Okay. That's that. That's that cat. Thank you for the bearing with the tech. All right. Megan, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Yep. 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 I think I got to be considered for the council on Northern Library, but. but What's, What's the, the what would, what be, would the be the remainder FTE for the math management? Point seven. Point seven. Thank you. Which is Which is what we are what currently, we are currently functioning, functioning with right now is point seven. We had, had it budgeted at one point zero, but the reality, the reality became a point seven, okay. which, which actually works best for that, for that employee. employee. Thank you. If we can't, I'll run down and we'll get them back to you. Okay. Um, um, is the, the um, three, three, four, four, twenty-six student math expected to continue on to next, next year and the year after? It's softened because of the split. It's because, because of the three, four, four that it's big. So when the fourth graders move on and move into five, six, it right sizes both. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, second is, uh, I, I, I'm going to just with, with the argument, argument that, um, that the small, small schools, schools think, think that they're, they're taking in, in uh, too much, much resources, resources uh, from a lot of budget. It's a disproportionate amount. Um, it sounds, sounds sort of scary to me um, because they don't, they don't really, really have any, any of the types of activities like, like the high school does, does in terms of driver's ed, athletics, a whole multitude of things that high school just need for their education. So I don't understand that. And that position is really important. Yeah, I don't understand that. The building foundation blocks for our students coming in the future are delivering themselves. Think they can't get much money to support. I just don't understand that. Um, um, the other uh, thing is um, 
What is, what is the, the uh, minimum point of mathematics? Um, um, you made a point of saying that the third grade is being restricted in, in, in using like by third grade during third and fourth step, 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 step. What is the uh, grade level, level that is important for mathematics skills and understanding the future in the ground school? It's the metric that I asked the question. The metric that I the metric that I'm, I'm aware of is actually it has to do with algebra in the middle, the middle level, which is a little, little bit different grade level. level. And, and then I don't know if there's, there's another metric that is as solid as a third grade, grade reading one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and that's obviously the metric. I would agree with the algebra statement. We do not have a little about the foundation, right? Those in the foundation from the third grade are not. And I'm working on taking them with them. And I was just saying, I'm working on all of those things. But they all go up to algebra. Thank you. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. yes. We, have, we have a really long item. This is only the presentation. There's a whole discussion of the item. Can we just say more questions? Yeah. And if people have them, they can ask them after the presentation. Yeah, and it's a good point, Kari, and that we're going to have a space for questions from public right now, and then we're going to do our board questions during our discussion. So let's wait until the end. Thank you. Gillian, you're up. I don't know what happened last year. What, what I'm generally talking about, about in terms of the K-A and kindergarten numbers is um, there, was there was just in terms, terms of programming that, that we would uh, be able to provide for kids, kids. for three, five, five year olds, we, we don't, don't have, have the this to do math, math to, to, to do it. it. Um, I would uh, jump about five to students in the course, course and get out of the course, and, and they're, they're just don't, don't seem to, to be there. So, so I, I think it really just to get that foundational learning is so, so important. important. Uh, uh, and really, like, like Jen, Jen said, we would, we would be proposing that even if we had, had um, <laughs> even if it added to the budget, budget because, because it is what's, what's best, best for kids and what kids need. So, so for Dodi, what, what I looked at was the budget, the budget parameters that we were given and, and the cost of restaurant uh, funds. funds. And, and so, so what, what I propose is uh, reducing back down, down to having a paying eight count counselor. counselor. One thing, One thing I want to point out that uh, uh, for the Jody Jody counselor, counselor starts or having my first person in this position, I guess. Quite frankly, quite frankly, incredible. incredible. And, she and she also <coughs> takes on uh, Dodi doesn't have a separate behavior support person because, because Maureen is so, so intimately involved in, 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 in the behavior support, support system, 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 as system as well. So, so that, that she's, not <laughs> she's an all in one person. And, and then the other, other reduction, reduction related, related to the loss of the SF fund would be being introduced to the pre pandemic level, level of nursing, nursing which would be to reduce 2.5 of the school nurse. nurse. And, and with, with the, the goal, goal of, of still, still really working to have a nurse, nurse in the building every day and moving at a high frequency, frequency. Um, one of the highest frequency visits. So, so how are we going to continue to support, support students, students because, because that is a sunset and a reduction and that's you know, not a sunset to less funding because it is it isn't enough. But we do have reports in, in place, place. Uh, um, in general, general, general system support system support 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 for the use of the platform. Really build or build his own community and supportive infrastructure as well as having these meetings. meetings I, I, we need teachers, teachers in, in addition to the UTT meetings and we can set things as teachers every other week individually to discuss and also kind of work on professional development of them. The uh, 
tell me tell what, what, what do you what think, think about, about SEL, SEL academic um, um, and, and behavior supports and interventions and, and instruction. And through that activity, I think it's very clear that our, that our staff will be going, going back, back to pre COVID numbers for um, a, a student body and the size that we have. It's not in the best interest of our children. Also, also looking at class sizes. In order, in order to, to find some, some sort of reduction, our class size will go up. You notice on that AQS slide 10, there was, there was a yellow, yellow highlight for each one um, um, we, we will be above, above the class size, size, and I always have recommendations, but I also believe um, if, if I have to reduce anywhere, anywhere, I would rather have large class sizes and keep a full-time school counselor. Um, the decisions the that, that I made truly, truly were based on input, input from, from my staff, staff the, the observations that I made, and also, and also looking at U.S. US across, across the board, the board player, player, um, I, 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 I feel guilty and I've had to keep those guilty um, in not making, making more rejections, but also, also more, more rejections will put us, us further um, um, our, our staff to student, student ratio is the highest in, in all, all the elementary schools already, and I feel it further cuts will just put us that that much higher in all of the other schools. And I don't, I can't go back and tell my teachers. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you have to serve more children than anyone else in the district, district and we're going to further cut so that you can serve even more children. I don't, I think the other side of the equity point is that, and it's not something that we talk about often because I, I have said to my colleagues, colleagues in the smaller schools, school, like they'll feel the same, same about the same, same time, time if I have the school nurse who's serving well over 200 children, it doesn't feel equitable to me to say you need to serve even more when your colleagues are, you know, serving fewer than you across the board. The last, the last thing I'll do is I gave a lengthy LPL quotation just a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not going to share anything, anything that's, um, that, um, that we have in the NES. We've already heard that from you very recently. Um, um, but those that's best that's students are supported, and we hope is that they will continue to be supported in my state. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Felicia. Caroline. So, so Esther, Esther Remy had a full-time school, school nurse, a uh, uh, point six school counselor, and a full-time higher educator in the behavior support board. With, with Esther, Esther Remy, Remy and Remy, they increased the LA school counselor to a point eight, which is what we were going to have. And, and the, the behavior position, and our student support is uh, uh, part, of part of our four staff, staff members, members and advocacy, advocacy team, team, which I presented, which I presented on in October. Um, um, it's made up of our nurse, our school counselor, our and the support specialist. So, so in considering, considering all interventions, interventions in the building, the, the behavior, behavior intervention, intervention was the area that was, area that was most reasonable, reasonable to shift responsibility to the existing team. team. So, so the student advocacy team will continue to be utilized, and, and the first, first responder responsibility will shift from, from teacher to a teacher, uh, teacher position, position to a parent position um, um, in the, in the proposal board. Thank you. Thank you. Steven. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, we've, we've seen these cuts already. already. Uh, um, we added had one, one school counselor, counselor uh, uh, under the extra funds, funds that, that was added in the middle school. school. So we had two school counselors in the middle school, three, three school counselors in our high school, and, and a director uh, of student services who all carries a, a small, small student load, load uh, but definitely a portion of my time. So the so so social worker provides by the services. We were reducing that school counselor at their position. Um, um, and and they're they're asking for us, for us to have a account counselor, so um, we really, really feel like this great creator need, need will redistribute the needs of our school counseling, counseling across the, the team, um, um, so, so that it's still the board's account counselor, plus the director, director of student, student services, services who, um, who also, also as I said, carries a load. load. Um, the the SAP, SAP position we're lucky, we're lucky enough to have a grant, grant that will cover a significant portion of that. We certainly have to take a little, little bit of money out of that. that. We would, we would look long term as to what is the continued need around, around that position. Um, I, think I think the board, board is aware in our executive session of, of the need for um, uh, uh, support for our students, students who are uh, struggling with substance abuse. Uh, and so this and counseling, so counseling position would be great because it would be not only um, reactive, reactive, which is uh, uh, certainly a part of the counseling, counseling but it can be proactive, proactive in, working in working with students to so reduce the, uh, the incidence of the use of alcohol, tobacco, 
really big. Uh, uh, it is the number one. Uh, I would also say, say the reduction of parent indicators. Uh, uh, that is that now one, one position, position and, and one, one position, position, position that we do not need. need. There may be a change in the student plan, plan for next year. year. Um, so, um, so there would there be, be a reduction in need of one of the professionals anyway. This one kind of student need, need. The, other the other one is an unfilled position, which still leaves us with like four or five unfilled positions that are professional, even with that reduction of that. So I think these are very reasonable cuts for us. We will have our presentation about, about our, um, support, our support systems, systems our NCL, uh, um, that will be coming up uh, in, in the new year. Um, uh, but you can see some of our general system and some of the uh, supports that we provide to our students there. Um, kind of, kind of uh, outline the student, student services department, department the uh, house students. <laughs> and, and that, and here's some more slides. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks David. Okay, okay. we're going to power, power through, through the, number the number of portions. And then, uh, um, then we will... I'll pause, which I will happily turn on both of us. This is it. Thank you. Uh, we entered this new slide uh, to give you some, some general, general definitions for some, for some terms, terms that, are that are pretty common, common throughout, throughout the tax rate, rate development. development. Uh, as, uh, as you're aware, aware Act 27 legislation, legislation takes effect for Act 2025. Um, and it's a replacement of the equalized, of the equalized pupils, pupils with, with the long-term long weighted average daily membership, membership also LPWABM. Neither, Neither one's very easy to say. Easy to say. <laughs> Vermont, Vermont has changed, changed the weights, weights added, added new categories, and is using the long-term long weighted ADM account 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 instead of equalized equal pupils, pupils to calculate, calculate the tax rate, rate for F25. Uh, long-term uh, long ADM is the two-year two average of long-term average daily membership, membership plus state-based state state students plus all applicable, applicable weights. The, the FY24 FY spending, spending uh, long-term long weighted ADM equivalent, so that's, that's not what we used in FY24, but they've, they've given us the calculations to figure out what it would have been. been. Uh, we'll uh, be compared to the FY25 spending, spending per, per long-term weighted ADM. ADM. If, if the district, district increases the spending per pupil by more than 10%, the tax, the tax rate, rate will be subject to review by a committee. So if we talk about uh, common uh, level appraisal now, CLA, CLA is a comparison of each town's, each town's total property value on the brand list, list versus, versus the state listed value. value. The state the listed value, listed value is comprised of actual sales, sales generally, generally averaged, averaged over three years. years. This, is, this how is how the state provides taxpayers with an equalized brand list across the state. state. Reflecting, Reflecting local, local variations that occur based on reappraisal schedules and other factors. As, As homes, homes sell, sell for more, more than, than they are listed, listed on the grant, grant list, it, it lowers the CLA. CLA. And, as, and the as the CLA decreases, decreases the, tax the tax rate increases. increases. So that's, so that's what you're looking at when you, at when you see the CLA, the CLA number. number. If it goes, it goes down, down, your tax, tax rate is going to go up. If it goes up, your tax rate is going to go down. Uh, in, uh, 2024, in 2024, the district, the district saw decreases ranging between 5.19% and 8.95%, with the most significant drops, drops in Middlesex and Berlin. Then we then have the property yield. Property, 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 property yield is set by the legislature after town meeting. Town meeting. So, so we, we currently use the, the S provided by the tax commissioner from, from the November 30th letter. It was December 1st this year, it came out of the It's November 30th. Uh, uh, this bill tries, tries to project an, an amount necessary, necessary to fund school, school district budgets, budgets across, across the state based, based on preliminary, preliminary budget information provided to the AOE, AOE in, in November. November. So, so the tax commissioner and group people, people get together, together and try to figure, figure out what that yield would need to be, be based, based on very early, early estimates. estimates. Uh, this year, the year property yield also, also needed an adjustment because of the long-term weighted average daily membership. It is, it is a much, a much higher, higher number, number than the equalized, equalized pupils across the board, board which, which then drives, drives the per pupil spending, spending down, down, which means, which means in order to fund, fund uh, budgets, budgets, you have, you to, have, have to have a lower, lower property, property yield. So, so as, as that yield, yield decreases, decreases the, property the property tax increases. increases. So somehow so they have, have to figure out how, how to pay for the money, money pay for pay the, the, the school budgets. And that, and that property yield is sort of that, sort of that adjusting factor, factor in the entire, entire equation. equation. Which is which why it's one of the last things that gets set by the legislature at the end, at the end of the school process. process. Uh, so you've so already, you've already seen, seen this list of factors impacting the FY5 budget, budget development. development. 
Notably, these factors were also identified in the tax commissioner's November 30th letter as has affecting school districts, school district budget statewide. With an, With an undetermined, undetermined COA, COA possible changes to the property, property yield that may still impact the tax rate, the rate so, so much is still, is still out of our control. control. The board's, the board's focus, focus now is on, is on the expense, expense side, of side of the budget. So these, so these are the updated budget, budget numbers. numbers. They have an 11.78% 11 11 increase, increase in expenditures. expenditures. Uh, a, a reduction of revenue of 7.02%. Uh, for, for a combined, combined percentage, percentage increase of 16.07 percent in the education spending. Some more, Some more budget, budget numbers for you. The initial long-term rated average of membership divided by the AOEs is an is increase of 8.14 percent from. 2021 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 8.44, 
regardless, regardless of, of income. We should, we should also keep in mind, mind that, in that in order to generate the funds, funds necessary, necessary to account for school districts receiving the 5% tax rate cap, as included, uh, uh, property, property yield, or income yield, or, or, income yield, or, the, or the non spent tax, tax rate, rate may, may be adjusted by the legislature. By the legislature. So, the so the more towns, towns that do that, that and experience that 5% cap, 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 the lower, the lower that yield has to go, or some, or some other factor that they use. Just, just sort of to, sort of to reiterate, reiterate, when the when legislature put, put in these um, calculation sections in Act 127, I do not believe they were anticipating the number of districts that would hit them, <coughs> and it is the math is not working out. So there will need to be some fix to the Ed Fund because all these districts spending at this level. <coughs> Taxes are capped here, so the money that goes into the fund, the Ed Fund tax here, and there's a gap. How big that gap is, there's a lot of distance between now and then. And there's no mechanism to fill the gap. The, the property yield. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right, the property yield, which okay. that's, a, that's that mystery number that the legislature sets. Or they could use their non-homestead tax rate, adjust that, um, or adjust the income yield. So those are those three factors that the legislature controls to make up that gap. So it's this chart based on 5%? Yes. Yes, correct. Yes. Oh, yes, 5% cap. Uh, yes. Our actual increase is 10. 10, mm -hmm. 10 yes. yes, it's in a previous slide. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And when you say until it sunsets, we don't know when it sunsets. Uh, 2029 is when, okay. when the law goes away. But here's the little, the little tweak is, if we hit uh, above 5% next year, then we're protected by the 5% cap. If we hit 4.9, our tax rate is increased by 4.9, and we don't get that protection back in the following year. So even though the law would protect us if we went over five next year, and then the following year we'd be able to get that protection, once you lose the protection, you don't get it back. <coughs> Looking at these CLA conservatively, um, and that's, that's determined by town reappraisal, uh, not reappraisal, but it's it's like taking a, uh, the fair market value of each of those towns and trying to reevaluate if it were among a statewide. So no town can kind of fudge their their numbers on their green list. So is there a sense that these numbers will go down and tax rate go up? I Just think I think some of your towns will be. Uh, Significantly impacted more than others by going down. Yep. CLA going back down. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. it's it's clear that the the housing market is very tight, and that is causing a demand and in, in higher prices on homes. Okay, thank you. So we we would open it to the public. If you anybody that can listen that is hearing us right now, if you have questions, to you <coughs> raise your hand. I don't see any members of the public in live, so. You can go ahead and raise your hand if you have questions or comments. Oh, you see one, honey. Okay. Honey, do you want to unmute yourself? Go ahead. Hi, I'm curious um, to know if it's been talked about to have a K-1 class together at both Doty and Rumney that would keep kindergartners in their home school and not be bused to a different school. Um, it would still reduce a teacher if you had a K-1 class and a 1-2 or a K-1 and then a straight second, depending on what the numbers are. Um, and I know K-1 isn't the ideal combination, um, but it, it can also be very successful and it currently is being successful in some schools. So I'm just curious about um, if we've talked about that combination, which would still reduce a teacher and would keep kindergarten students in their home school. Sure. Either one of you. Um, so the Romney staff discussed that and we're um, opposed to that. They have been for years. We've been fortunate not to be forced to do a K-1. Um, it is what we would consider if we didn't combine, which is why the combination is um, such a great opportunity for both communities. And the, for Jody, this is where I always have to like close my eyes and, and think, because it's 
next year's numbers, not this year's numbers, is that if I were to have a K-1 I next year, I would have a K-1 of uh, 14 students and then a straight second grade of 13 students. So both grade levels would still be under EQS. Thank you, Heidi. Becca? Thanks, Flora. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm not going to go on camera because I'm in the bathroom brushing my children's teeth. But um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but I've been trying to listen. So I I just have a quick clarifying question, which is um, uh, related to the the one the 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 kindergarten combo the um the loss the FTE reductions at Doty and Rumney that um that were discussed by the principals the FTE for the kindergarten is not reflected in those those slides correct so this is sort of an additional separate um savings or reduction I just wanted to make sure I understood that um, and yes, we don't know okay and that would be a just decision in terms of the the loss of the FTE there that would be based on staffing. So we don't know yet, or, or seniority and all that sort of, we don't know yet which school would be losing a, a, a teacher from their community, that's, right? Yep, that's exactly right. And and seniority is district-wide. So it's not just seniority at Rumney and Doty even, it's all elementary schools. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. That's super helpful. Thank you. I don't see any other hands, so we're gonna continue to move, move on. Uh, we're gonna have a chance to discuss this as a board, so I'm just gonna go through our next. <coughs> so we're gonna move to the superintendent and central office bill report. <laughs> so I'm gonna open it first for questions, and then Megan is also gonna highlight a couple of things. <coughs> were there any specific questions? Otherwise, we would like to highlight the curio. Anybody rushing to Megan, go ahead. Okay, so a specific piece that we'd love your feedback on is um, you in the packet is a draft of the equity indicators, and just process wise, as you know, you passed an equity policy, which is really exciting. And um, as part of that policy, we have to report back to you how we're doing, and in order to do that, we need metrics indicators. So um, we have convened a design team to do kind of the legwork and the research and the drafting for equity indicators. And then that group is also in charge of gathering input and feedback from a number of groups. Um, we've talked to the Humanity and Justice Coalition. Um, we will be inviting the Families of Color Affinity Group through uh, Humanity and Justice to get some input. We've talked to multiple student groups, which is great. Um, so the version that you have is a mid-year checkpoint, and you are a group that we would like to give you, or we would like to give you the opportunity to give us some feedback. And um, I'll try not to just repeat what's in the memo. We are looking at measuring our progress toward our equity policy in three ways. One of them is traditional outcomes. Those are numbers, that's data. Um, one of them is what are experiences, what are our students in particular, but students and families experiencing that interrupts injustice, um, and what are we doing? What are the things that the system is doing? Because we think that by looking at all three of those metrics, we will get a broader sense um, of our work. And um, I probably should have started with this piece. The first thing the design team did was review how schools measure equity, because we are not the first people to say, how do you measure equity? There's some resources linked in the bottom of that document. And all of the um, brainstorms that you see are somewhere in those resource documents. So I would love um, just general feedback. Uh, certainly can answer questions, but this is iterative, so this might change. Um, this most certainly will change by the time you see it at the end of the year. Megan, who's on the team that's creating this? So it is, the design teams are a leadership team structure. So it's members of the leadership team. It's myself, it's Celia, it's Lisa LaPlante, who's not here, and mm -hmm. Caroline. That's all of us, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. And so part, that's, that's so that we can mm -hmm. have a smaller group do the work, and then we do obviously need additional voices. 
And you, you uh, reference the uh, families, the people of color affinity group and that. Are there other representatives of other historically marginalized populations that might have been, you know, historically marginalized by um, poverty or by, you know, access and, and things? Well, it's not, we have one affinity group currently, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there isn't a pool to draw from. Mm -hmm. um, is there, is there a, a thought process around that or a thinking of how to um, um, potentially, I mean, you know, because of digging down into where does equity uh, ripple all across our, our district. And so um, just ways of checking in on this with others, you know, a wider population. I just, I didn't know what that yeah, was. Yeah, we, we did talk about this subject at our, our last Justice Coalition meeting, and part of the work of the Justice Coalition is not just, mm -hmm. you know, it should integrate everything. You know, that's having that equity lens. So part of our Justice Coalition work is part of it. So, so we don't have an affinity group, but it is part of the Justice Coalition. Does that make sense? Well, I think it's good feedback, because yeah. mm -hmm. that's part of why we're asking mm -hmm. for this level of input is how could we gather right. that mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's helpful. And again, I should the, the design team wants to take all of this and say, mm -hmm. okay, now mm -hmm. where do we go? Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. Thanks. <coughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the ILI study and what that looks like. Yeah, great, thank you. So ILI is the organization that our equity scholar comes from, so our equity scholars are unemployed, and they are conducting a study actually for purposes of furthering research into how do you make a difference in equity, um, and we um, have the advantage of being able to benefit from that. So they are seeking um, students, families, community input to participate in focus groups, to be interviewed, um, and the goal is to say when things went well, so they are speaking specifically to folks who identify from a marginalized uh, population of all kinds. And the question is when it worked for you, when either a teacher or an adult or someone did something, what was the something? And they're trying to generate concrete actions that kids experience. And the first step would be just learning what those actions are. But once we have a set of here are the things that you do that make students feel welcome and valued, how do we then increase those behaviors? Um, so that's what the study is designed. It's really exciting. They are at the point right now of figuring out what those things are, which would be great. Where's the study taking place? Um, they're seeking input here, students, but also families. So it's within so our district. Within our district. Yes. Okay. Yep. <coughs> We're at their first pilot program. Yep. So they're looking to keep expanding. So I was going to say, um, I think this is great um, that uh, uh, I really like the three categories of outcomes, experience, implementation, because it's such a complex set of things that we're trying to measure, and it's still a relatively new field, and just makes some sense. And the, the way, I, when I look at this, um, I kind of put it into three buckets, I, I'm glad you asked about that, because I didn't know anything about that, I wasn't even really considering, but, but there's a lot of like activity kinds of stuff, especially in implementation, which is mm -hmm. relatively easy to measure, it just talks about things that we're doing, not necessarily the impact it has. There's the disaggregated student data, with which this board and the Ed Quality Committee know, are getting to know pretty well. And while it tells us a lot, it's very complex, right? There's a lot going on in, in that data. And so then that left me with a climate survey, which I think is, is really good. It sort of gets at the subjective experience of going to our schools. But it, it just reminds me that we need, we're, we've been putting a lot of emphasis on that. We need to get really good at climate surveys, right? Mm -hmm. And in designing them so that they're asking, they're collecting the right data and then analyzing them, you know, all of us. Yeah, and a couple things about that. One, as you know, this year is the first year that will deliver a common one across the system. So mm -hmm. even just that fact by itself means it'll be a little bit. But one of the um, most, there's lots of meaningful input that came from our student conversations, but one of the things that the student group shared with me is the addition of, and frankly, they said focus groups, but interviews with students in that middle column to also get at. Mm -hmm. 
surveys give some good data that's, that's um, can crunch the numbers, you can summarize them, and it should be fleshed out by actual conversations with students. So that's a piece of feedback that the design team is trying to wrap their heads around because I think it's really important. There's a term, if, I mean, there's a book about it, but just this concept of street data, that it's not just the numbers, it's also experiences, and you have to be open to gathering it from multiple places, but you also need the numbers. You also need, so it's really about having all of them. So that's helpful. Any other comments from board members? One question I wonder about is how, is there an opportunity to apply this to existing documents? So like, do we apply this lens to um, our family, our, our staff handbooks, our family handbooks? What are the ways that we can apply our equity lens to the things that already exist? I think it's a great question. Um, one of the things we're doing, so on that right-hand column, is to use equity lens tools, because there are some tools that mm -hmm. exist. We have a sort of homegrown one to look at traditions and what are things we do. We have a tool that the policy committee has uh, has looked at. I don't mm -hmm. know that we really, really used it, but there's a tool, uh, equity lens tool to look at policy through. Um, so there are a few different things. Um, that also reminds me, speaking of existing things, uh, one of the things that the design team recognizes is this type of data really should become part of the ed quality mm. reporting mm -hmm. cycle. So that instead of getting one like equity report per mm -hmm. year, you are actually getting these <coughs> metrics well. throughout the year. Um, this year, for the first time, you will probably get a standalone equity mm -hmm. presentation on the metrics. But over time, it will make more sense to be folded into ed quality. <laughs> Maybe just two comments that I really appreciated the email on the traditions, and I don't know if it came from you, Cecilia, or from Megan, or I don't know who it came from, but I got it as a parent and probably as a board member too. Oh. Um, and really appreciated that. And um, also, I wish that I had started my question with also saying that I really like this framework. I think it's really great to see the activities and how that's leading to outcomes and experiences, and it has a very logical flow of understanding what you're doing and how it's working. I mean, I really appreciate the thought that's gone into it. So thank you for that. Thank you. And that they were actually included equity policy. In, like, so yes. us as a board being into governance and being completely linked to mm -hmm. governance through policy and monitoring. Mm -hmm. Sort of achieves two of our goals. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, that was really helpful. I think the addition too, just as someone who had the privilege of participating in um, graduate credit um, training with the Equity Scholar as a board member working with um, administrators and uh, educators in that course, that um, there is just incredible value in having that targeted time to, to work collaboratively and as a board member, I just highly recommend it to better get acquainted with administration and staff and, and also better understand what the district is working to do when it comes to equity. And it's, you know, it's a commitment, but it, I found it incredibly valuable. And the course is opening soon. It's opening, yes. yeah. You're <laughs> for and you're January. And we need more people. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I met with Shelly this morning, and I know it's coming your way. <laughs> Jansen, and you know, to staff and stuff. But I got the stuff from uh, Shelly today, and it's coming. It's coming your way. There's other people. Yeah. Megan, I'm wondering, do you want to highlight anything for me? Just because it was part of our yeah, configuration, configuration yeah. conversation, can we highlight just a couple of things, or even the last, the last we yep. call it, since class size? So this is a time of year when you your policy asks that we give you class size guidelines. The guidelines are interesting because we develop them to some extent to match our configuration, and so they are quite a bit lower than. Um, and what I mean by lower is just there's we have small class sizes. Um, and we have some class sizes we believe are too small for good instruction. And so um, we 
after lots of conversations, and we discussed this last year, and this reality was true last year too, we have a minimum that we don't believe a typical classroom should be below 12, with some exceptions, particularly at the high school, but in general, and we don't meet that minimum. We have many class sizes that fall below that 12, and that's because of our configuration. And so that just came up a little bit during the um, <coughs> finance committee conversation, is just acknowledging that one of the reasons we want to look at configuration is to be able to meet our own minimum that we think is best instructionally. So, so if you have a, yeah, yeah, that's good. <coughs> if, you, if somebody didn't have a chance to read that memo, just read the memo in the class size. And also, the, they're sending that presentation by Janet. It's just like 20 minutes in Title I, which I didn't, you know, I, I don't know, I missed those. I had no idea that there was a presentation. It was really helpful. The understanding of you know, which are our schools and just the short explanation of the, the, how they're using this year and which schools this year are benefiting <coughs> for, for Title I. For Link and U32 is what I believe was in that, but it's it's a good presentation. And I, it's sometimes those links are easy to miss, so just mm -hmm. yeah, look at it. Um, let's move right into uh, uh, the SBA report. There was uh, a just, I would just highlight today, just read your uh, uh, update. We're trying to do a better job about monitoring how many, so please help us out. You know, like, those go to everybody. Last week, just 60 people opened those newsletters. So the more people that, you know, there's a lot of really helpful information right now, and especially one of them is in okay, asking people to go out for the board. Laura, can you speak up? It's really hard to oh, hear you sorry, because I'm Thanks. speaking to that side. Mm -hmm. So just to make sure to open your your newsletter updates, we're trying to do a better job about making sure that we are adding stuff that is interesting for everybody. It, we're add, adding national stuff too, but we are counting how many open. Mm -hmm. You know, we can tell how many people actually. It's not just going to air inbox if you open it. It's not like many data, but we know how many. So we want to make sure that it is valuable. You're trying to get my data, that's what you're saying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're trying to better yes. Yes. We're, yes. We're, yes. Trying we're trying to better <laughs> we're trying to better serve you and and uh, public education is important as you guys don't know, that's why you're sitting here. So we appreciate if you check your updates. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Education quality update. Mine's really quick. Um last no, the beginning of this month. Yes. We talked, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know what month we're in. I'm getting there. We talked about scientific inquiry and content, and we got a report from Jen, and that was really great. And we also tackled having a conversation about the ed quality standards, which was also big, and we still managed to do it in an hour. And we're going to be coming up, we don't meet in January, we'll meet in February, and then we won't meet in March. And one of the things that we're going to discuss is how we're going to actually schedule our reports to the board. Because while we have a plan to give you four reports, we didn't actually like come up with a schedule. <laughs> so we're going to do that and come up with the next report, which should be on student learning outcomes. Okay. So then we can move right into our budget discussion. We're in five corporations, FY25 budget draft. It, now is the time to ask specific. Do you have any other specific questions for our leadership team and for Megan and Cecilia? Now would be the time to ask any other clarifying questions. I have, I have a bunch, but I'll just, do you want me to just do one at a time? And we'll is run? there anybody else that is ready to ask a question? Otherwise, ask two, and then we'll move on so that everybody gets an opportunity. So just some clarification around, so the Berlin, the behavior systems coach, that is being covered 0.5 FTE um, for next year. Is that beyond the one year plan or is that just next fiscal year? It's, it's, so it's interesting, the financial end of it is, the reason it's listed as a, it's a 1.0 position, mm -hmm. but the funding right. is for 12 months. So it, our estimate That's based on when we hire, which we haven't hired yet, but yeah. once we hire, it'll be 12 months from that time. We estimate that to be about halfway through next year. So from a budget standpoint, we've budgeted half the cost. So that's why if I do like just a comparison between the school counselor is 
uh, taking away 94,000, yes. but 0.5 is 61,000, yes. you're not necessarily proposing that the following year it would bump up. I mean, it all depends on who the person is, obviously, but it, not necessarily 122 that you would Correct. be absorbing into the yeah. budget. Okay, yeah. thank you. <coughs> and then East Montpelier, you know, Alicia, I was just, um, and, and first off, thank you all for this information. This is very helpful. It's more meat. Um, I mean, you gave us meat last year. That doesn't sound right. And my vegan daughter-in-law would like me using the word <laughs> meat anyway. But anyway, gave a lot of substance, plant-based substance, um, to, um, to the information last year. But this year was very helpful to have very specifics and speaking to these. So thank you. Um, so Alicia, you were talking about, um, you had brought up about the the counselor, but the counselor isn't in any of this, correct? It's only that 1.0 FT, not only, but you it's don't the. don't see the counselor. Right. There is a 0.4 FTE increase in numbers because that was an ESSER funded position, right? So it's not listed in that table mm -hmm. on the slide, but there is that additional money to bump up from okay. COVID times a 0.6 to a 1.0 counselor. Okay, so that's that is an increase this current year. It's an increase for next year. So what you see in that slide, where like on average, say a hundred thousand dollars is one point zero FTE teacher, mm -hmm. and that and on my slide it doesn't show. I'm not looking at the slides. I can't tell you the exact number, but whatever that number is, it's much lower. The decrease of a one point zero teacher because it is offsetting the point four counselor cost. Does that make sense? Yes, mm -hmm. but that's kind of new information, though. I don't think we saw it. Was that in a previous presentation? The counselor uh, add to the budget was part of the baseline budget. OK, mm -hmm. OK. And it's just, I'm just trying to get clarity. So that ex that makes sense as to why you were talking about like the There's no increase. hidden number. No. It's right, no, I'm just trying to. You don't see that number. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, OK. Um, thank you. So those are my two. Chris, I see your... Uh, uh, no, no, I did. My yeah. are, are there any other um, increases in positions that are not obvious, like the counseling position at East Montpelier, which is not... Same well, it was some that's light. Did you see it on this light show? What? It was on this light show. Did you see anything? It was. Right yeah. Counselor? I think what you're asking is um, the two ads, essentially, to personnel is the, F, the SAP at U32 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the... Um, the Berlin, Berlin position. Okay. Yeah. But you said, well, it sounds like there's an ad of 0.4. It's a functional ad because it's essentially keeping mm -hmm. the ESSER counselor, which means, so instead of Alicia finding her dollars by going back to her pre-pandemic counselor letter level, she's mm -hmm. choosing to reduce a classroom teacher. Okay, so the classroom teacher then, this reduction of 95, it's less 0.4. It would have been a higher reduction if there wasn't an increase of 0.4 in the counselor. Correct. Is yes. that right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank yeah. you. Um, were all of the school, individual school budgets reduced by the proportional loss of ESSER funds that were allocated to that school? They all sought to do that. Not all of them hit the entire amount. But okay. yes, they were all seeking. They were um, looking for reductions in the magnitude of whatever their ESSER portion was. And some did it more, sounds like yes. Callis did it more thoroughly than anybody. Callis had the most ESSER funds to go <coughs> get, mm -hmm. essentially. Yes. They, they were receiving the most, uh, I believe the most. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, next is, um, in, in heard about a, um, I guess, I guess it may have been Romney that the first responder duties are going to be allocated to a para? Correct. Um, equally trained to the position that's being lost in terms of emergency care? They won't care. have a teaching license, but they will have the behavior response training, um, which we currently use CPI, Crisis Prevention Institute. Thank you. Institute. Um, so yes, they would have that training. Well, is that equal to what's being lost? If you're shifting the responsibility of first responding, I'm assuming someone else already it's had it, it's not going to be there anymore. If it's a first responder, one would have a teaching license, what they would do with a student, would you start with de-escalation, which really starts with connection. 
and and I would. Well, actually, maybe think of first responder more in a medical sense. So I mean, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
to rotate through mandatory testing? What's the plan to rotate through the busiest times? Um, so I would envision doing that once we have a settled amount of FTE. Let's pull them together and say, what's the best way to serve all 1,400 students in the system with this FTE? Thank you. Yeah, I just want to make sure we give ourselves time. enough time, time. in yeah. terms of process. That yeah. I, I suggest we wrap up the questions and hear I, from each board member about what yeah. what we think about this and what the next steps ought to be. Because yeah. if we each speak for one minute, that's another 15, 20 minutes Great. before we can even move on. Thank you, Kari. Um, I'm going to let and ask a question, and then we'll move into seeing, you know, I would, I would like to question that process after Michaela speaks, though. Okay, go ahead, Michaela. <laughs> I don't know if I should have one question. I'm going to wave my question at the moment. Okay, so if, if you guys are speaking to the, the budget, I think what, what we do need to do is move into giving guidance to our, our administrators. We're, moving, we're hoping to approve this budget on January 17th. Right. So we need to have a final, you know, is, are, are we ready to accept this budget as our final draft, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'm not sure why we're not, um, why we're closing down the questions, because perhaps the questions that I'm asking are informing me as to whether or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not asking questions just to ask questions, mm -hmm. and I don't know that I can say, yep, let's move forward, unless I've had an opportunity to ask, and I only have two other questions. I guess I'm a little frustrated that um, this is the time I thought that we need to ask our questions so we can give the guidance and know once we come together in January, are we solid or not. I mean, I've been up since four, so I'm exhausted too. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, okay, so why don't we just go around and start with ask your questions and then we'll take a break first. Can we have a moment? We've been at it since 6.15, would that be possible just to, before going into like a very intense period of sharing? Sure. Can Thanks. I take five minutes? Yeah, yeah please. Thank you. So, Okay. So, Chris, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to start here because you already had a. Sit in the corner. Maggie, Maggie, do you have any questions? Do you have a question? You can ask a question or give input for the budget right now, or you can even say if you're ready to support the budget, whatever. And we're just going to go. If you're not ready, okay. pass, but let's just keep it moving. I'm still struggling with reductions in nursing and counseling services, and I understand that there was a mandate for administrators to think creatively and make selection, and that um, this is a, like their dream scenarios of what staffing would look like in the um, dream situation. Um, but I'm still struggling with that. <clears throat> any, any, do you think they're meeting student needs? I question that, or I wouldn't be struggling with that. It is. Amelia. I'm appreciating the complexity of the lack of funding and the ESSER and like making these really tough decisions. Um, and I'm also really appreciative of the work and the thought and the extra effort that you made to really present what the general systems of support look like and the details of how the students are supported. I think it makes a lot of sense and I think it's a really creative and inspiring way for everybody to come together to meet the student needs given that this is not an ideal situation. You just don't have the funding. So I'm ready to pass it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm basically where Maggie is. I mean, I, I also recognize in in the work that was done a ton of a ton of thought and creativity was put into it. But I also represent a town that 
was looking at the largest tax increase and the largest uh, amount of cuts and also a lot of long-term uncertainty and I th I'm just trying to provide what feels like the right level of scrutiny with this budget and and I, I guess I haven't I, I'm, I really miss Kat's presence here mm -hmm. I would have loved to chat with her um, that's where I am Thank you. Uh, thanks okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, I feel like I've sat with this proposal sent for a month now, and uh, this only added, I guess, much needed clarity to what the proposals were. Um, it feels like uh, they're great. I'm ready to pass this budget. I, I'm so frustrated, I think, with not, I'm frustrated with the situation all of our small towns are put in. And it's not a situation that we can control. I mean, we were given this money, all, all schools across the nation need this money, it's really clear. Um, but instead, you know, our elected leaders, not here, but at the federal level, are deciding to spend that money in other ways and not on our schools. And we have to make the hard decisions um, that nobody really wants to make. Um, and so, yeah, and I wonder, yeah, I wonder if that will change, but I'm ready to support this. Thank you for your work. Thank you, I wanted to thank all of our administrators for putting in the time to share with us how the students are going to be supported with these cuts, and I, I am going to just mirror a lot of what Joshua said, and I sat on it for a month. I'm ready to pass it.
And then, um, I have to go back in time. Mm -hmm. So when it went up to 1.0, we actually only accessed 0.5 of the FTE with the ESSER funds, so that it was a 0.9 nurse physician, 0.1 health FTE. Part of the reason, there were two parts of the decision, was part of it was that uh, my school nurse at that time, and also at this time, very interested in health education and very engaged and wanting to be into the classrooms. And at that time, we didn't have a, um, and the guidance <coughs> curriculum dovetails really nicely with the health education curriculum and the guidance counselor already does a lot of the components of the health education piece. And then with just the, sheer, the, the lack of uh, people in the district, we didn't actually have, many schools at that point didn't have dedicated health education. So this was a workaround that we came up with at Doty, and then as we ho started hiring the various decimal and splits, um, I'll be really upfront, scheduling is my weak link in terms of, and I just couldn't see how, if I'm gonna have somebody in, how that how to make it work to have somebody come in for some portion of some days, sometimes, and not completely upset the apple cart. Whereas with um, having both the counselor and the nurse do it, she could come into the guidance classes, and they could also, um, they can also ask things come up, like we had a, last year we had a, third grader found an older sister's vape and then brought it into school like, um, so then we were able to they were able to come into more and meeting for the class and have a conversation. So it's just sort of worked at, at Doty to to do it that way. So the nurse position would be Doty would either need to hire a nurse who was willing to do the health education and it would be a 0.5 position, or we would have to hire a 0.4 nurse and uh, a 0.1 health educator. Did that clarify or just make it even more complicated? Yeah. It's helpful context. <laughs> I feel like it is helpful because it's another demonstration of how this creative and more comprehensive model is actually put into practice when other people are stepping up to share the responsibility and the roles to support the kids, to fill the functions. Um, yeah, I just want to thank all the administrators for all of the work and for the extra explanations. Um, I really appreciate yeah, all of your hard work and trust that you all know what's best for your schools. And it seems like you all are confident that you're going to continue to serve all of our children in a quality way. And I'm ready to pass the budget because of that. Um, so when I look at the comparative summary page, which is page 15 in the packet, I'm really struck by how bleak a picture that, that it, we are facing in terms of the budget. You know, uh, it's a 16.1% debt increase in local education spending. And yet, just by fortune of this new um, pupil counting method, and the 5% cap, we're actually looking at tax rate projections that aren't all that bad. And so I'm kind of feeling, well, you know, bewildered a little bit. Yeah. And yet I have two significant concerns. Uh, one is a long-term concern, which is that nothing about those two benefits changes the long-term fundamentals. We're still going to have um, student uh, population decline, and we're still going to have cost inflation. 
and specifically salaries and medical insurance. That's, I don't see that changing. There's no reason to expect that to change in the next five years. And so in five years, when that 5% cap, if it holds, goes away, we will be face a fiscal cliff that is all the accumulated buffer of the five years. So I think this board and, and the, the next boards will really have to do our best to get as close to 5%, maybe without not going over it, but get as close to 5% as quickly as possible um, so that we um, reduce that cliff at the end. I guess it's like there's a moral component to it, mm -hmm. ethical component. There's always another cliff, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it stinks. I'm sorry, but and just, the, the other thing you said that out loud. Mm -hmm. The other concern is a is a near term. It's more like this year, and it goes to the point that Megan made earlier, which is if if this benefit, this five percent, is applying to us who are seeing a nine percent, you know, a, more than that, a, a sig more than ten percent um, uh, readjustment in our student population. If we're getting this benefit, then that means most, I would think, of the districts around. And the money's gotta come from somewhere, and it's not gonna come from some other bucket. There's no other pot of money that the legislature has. So I think they're gonna likely take a second look at these caps, and we would be um, a candidate for a change. So if, if the rules change on saying we are especially vulnerable, all that said, if I knew all this when we started, I would probably advocate for more reductions. I think it's too late to do that now, and I, 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 I'm in favor of supporting going forward with this draft. So I'm not, I, I wasn't totally comfortable with the framing of, oh, Calus is a high cost school, so they should have to cut more. I don't. I, I worry about sort of a, a, you know, thinking about you know bec because it's a, as a smaller school, a kid in Calus might not get the same things as a kid somewhere else. And I know that we all we already do have some inequities we're, we need to deal with. Um, I think that's something the board really needs to, needs to look at in terms of how we structure the entire district. Um, that being said, as I look at the, as I look at some of the ratios, particularly on things like counseling, I I can feel more comfortable with those reductions, knowing that okay, you're still you know, if you were in a bigger school, yeah, you might have a full-time counselor, but if they're off with another kid, that's not so different than if they're in their time when they're not working. Um, I think with the, with the nursing, I, I think I, I, I support the proposals. I think we do need to really look at how we can use nursing resources as a district rather than thinking of them as schools. Um, I know that during the pandemic, I mean, things that were um, impossible on Tuesday were done on Friday. And so that's, you know, I, I, I trust that we will be able to, to, to work on that. But I think I just want to, you know, I think that is something that needs to be, to be done to make sure that we are using some of those res If there's a resource in one school and a kid who needs the resource in another school, that we can connect those things. Um, but I, 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 do, I would support this budget as written. Can I ask my question? <laughs> I added a few more. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, one, Caroline, um, in terms of when you were doing your presentation, I just wanted to ask a couple of clarifying questions. So, with the reducing of the 1.3 paraeducators, are those currently filled positions? That is a good question. Um, no, not exactly. It's for not, um, part of it is, and part of it is on the bill. We, um, that's the best way I can answer it. Just so and, I can and, But the total, it's a shift in IEP needs that we're anticipating for next year compared to this year. Okay. And then when you were talking about the para being, this is question 1.A, um, <laughs> asking, uh, shifting, is it the reduction of that school-wide behavior professional to the paraprofessional that's now your emergency responder? Is that the shift? Yes. Okay. And then, last one. Um, or maybe that was the last, oh, no. I didn't want Stephen to feel left out. So, um, <laughs> so under your um, general systems of support, 
Is any of that different um, based on the um, reductions, or is that systems that already exist? So like this spark center, right? <laughs> Oh no, those are all things that exist, it and exists. will continue to exist. Yeah, yep. and then the students, the student services, which is the four school counselors director with point four caseload, is that That's both, projected. and and it, is that uh, middle school to high school, or yes. is that okay? All right. That's the, the entire building. Okay, and then this is just a consideration that I know is like, I'm just going to let lob it out there and mm -hmm. let it sit. But um, I think that. Uh, what I'm wondering, and I know there's so many things about it, is at what point do we have to consider, and this is across the state, moving our budget votes to when legislature is done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many parts of that, which is around the protection of um, hiring and, and moving and things like that. So I get it, and I'm not saying we're doing that now, but it's I'm just wondering about that. And, um, and again, and thank you, Daniel, for reflecting, you know, as part of this big board and the fact that my lens is Berlin, it's helpful for me to understand that I'm also representing Callis. And so to understand that ripple and that impact as well is important for me to hear. So I appreciate that. Um, I am leaning toward supporting this, um, the, a lot of the explanations, the very clear details of the um, coverage of nurse delegation is is helpful and so I am leaning toward that and I might not have been with her I could not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna let Chris go and then I will ask you the I, questions because he was out and I don't know that you heard it. well I know I missed some of the substantive yes. discussion I'm sure but I had to go pick up my daughter at the train station so it's okay. I was yeah. racing around <laughs> yeah racing around a little bit but okay. it was fun Okay. So well. just a, back in a half hour, bro. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how do you feel about this proposed budget? Are you ready to support it? And then if you had any questions, you can think about that while Chris <coughs> answers because you just came back. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, so I have a, a couple of comments. And I, I, I would generally support the budget, generally. Um, but I would like to see reallocation Sorry. take into account some counseling and nursing services by reallocating funding that is for unfilled positions at U32, I think, or para, and use them to, to uh, fund positions that are actually being, live bodies being cut, um, and taking care of addressing nursing and counseling services, um, because it seems to me counseling is still a crucial need if we're hiring behavioral specialists. Um, it seems like counseling is still a significant need in our district. Um, uh, in terms of, I appreciate the quality, uh, Vermont Ed quality standards, but those are basically just numbers. They don't take into account, is my understanding, environment. It's basically this many students get this many administrators, this many teachers, without taking into account the individual circumstances for each of those schools. So, you know, you have the numbers may say, yeah, we're adequately staffed, but the environment may not really reflect that. One final note is that. I trust that if uh, Rumley and Doty do consolidate pre-K and kindergarten, that they'll be split. One will be in one school, one will be in the other, as opposed to heavy loaded on one or the other, just because of the impact on the, the school communities and the greater community in the schools, uh, outside of the schools, like Middlesex and, and, uh, and uh, Worcester. So I would hope that those two programs would be not located in one I mean, that's a, I know that's an administration decision, uh, but I would hope that if those consolidations take occur, that they're split between the two schools. May I speak to the paraprofessional open positions? Those positions need to be filled to meet the needs of our students who have service plans, and we are currently understaffed to meet those needs. So if you cut those positions, we will not be able to meet, we're not meeting the full needs of our students right now because of those open positions. You would guarantee that we wouldn't meet them. We're trying to fill them. And if, we don't, if you cut them, then I can't fill them. Okay. Are those positions tied to IEPs? Is that what you're saying? Yes. 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 Okay. I didn't understand that. That's okay. okay. I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on that. Okay. Thank you. So I still think we should <laughs> provide more funding for counseling and nursing. 
So just not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but you're saying unless we add more castles, you're not ready to support the budget. I'm just trying to figure out because we're, you know, we. I, I, I haven't said that yet. Okay. Okay. So just clarify. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess my position that I've had for a while and going back some time is really still remains, um, you know, I heard some discussion earlier about funding certain <coughs> positions at pre-pandemic levels, and we're not in a pre-pandemic place anymore, and the needs of our kids, from where I sit and from what I understand about what's happening with um, reductions in, you know, us kids' abilities, loss of grade levels over time over the last few years, greater mental health needs, greater social service needs, all points to me in the direction of needing more counseling, <laughs> more of that type of help for kids' availability, um, and also for nurses. I mean, uh, to Chris's point, the one chart that talks about the, what the equal, equal quality standards, the EQS or whatever they are, I think the state standard is one nurse for every 500 students. That's absolutely absurd. I mean, that's absurd. In my mind, how can one nurse possibly effectively provide you know nursing needs for so if we're compared and we're not compared to that, our, our ratios are much better than that, which is great. But the point is, if that's some kind of a benchmark, that's not a benchmark that I want to consider. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that the needs remain great. <coughs> Um, in terms of mental health needs, in terms of counseling, in terms of having RNs or other nurses in the district. And even if it's having to rotate or having more nurses available as needs shift, I think, you know, I think that's, I think that's important. I know there's been a lot of work on this budget. I appreciate everything that, that all of the administrators have done. They know their buildings better than I do, certainly. Um, but my opinion, and, and from what I see and what I understand about what's happening um, in terms of kids' needs, uh, I don't think this necessarily reflects those particular needs. So, so you would be comfortable going about the ten percent? I'm just trying to like ask. Would you be comfortable going? Well, I'd be comfortable going about. See, for me, yeah, we. You, it's hard to know exactly where that line is, where an acceptable budget is for the public and where it isn't. That's very difficult to get a pure grasp of um, with certainty in my mind. So, but all I know is if we're, again, cutting counseling positions, cutting nursing positions, um, I don't think that reflects reality in terms of what kids need on, in those areas of their lives for me. So are you, again, same question I asked Chris, so are you not ready to support the budget as it is, or are you not supporting this budget well, as, as it is right now? I'm not saying we're not making this decision. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's aspects of it, I think, in terms of shifting grades around and, and having to do some realignment and those types of things. I think I generally... I'm supportive, knowing full well that the administrators have spent a lot of time looking at this. I respect their professional opinion. I know that they're working very hard on trying to do something that is both meeting the needs of the kids and also is fiscally responsible. But again, cutting counseling, and I, I just don't see, that for me, that's just really not something that I can support. So no. That's so um, there's parts of the budget I do support and others I don't. I mean, if, if that's if we're going to split hairs, then. Okay. So I don't think I missed. Uh, I don't think can I, I just anybody? Can I just make a comment? I'm really echoing Zach's comment. I think there's. I think we need to make sure that we're framing the conversation, especially about nursing and counseling, in the reality of. There's a service where there's a person in the building for the whole day, but when you're looking at the actual nurse to student ratio or counseling to student ratio, the smaller schools still have a higher ratio than the bigger schools. And so if we're actually talking about meeting needs and having that availability, I, I wanna make sure that people are understanding that looking at these numbers, that there's a one to 198 in Berlin for nursing 
and it's 1 to 156, and Callis and Doty, 1 to 216 to EM, and uh, East Montpelier to Alicia's point. So, like, I think we need to take that into account, too, and what that does to the the numbers and the equity. If we mm -hmm. do have a whole day nurse and counselor at those schools, then that nurse and counselor has way fewer than at the larger schools. Mm -hmm. So when we're cutting it, we're actually cutting it to normalize levels across schools more than anything. Okay. So I, you know, I like, I, I'll just take a moment to just take my board chair hat and just like, if I was just voting right now, obviously I, I, would, I would vote to support the work that, you know, we, we have hired the best administrators that we can think about in, you know, we've asked them a hard question and they come back with data informing it twice back to us with what they, but they think I, I am not the expert in the room. It doesn't matter how many education conferences I go. I am not with the students all the time and I'm asking their informed opinion on what would be best to serve the kids. Putting that aside, I am really worried about the education fund at large for the estate as, as it is right now. You know, even that 12% we had a Brad James come to our last meeting at UPA, just that it's making that cap, that 5% sustainable right now. The 12% increase that we're projecting on most boards would go through is $200 million in the head cap. Just to put it, and, it, and it's not like we have to bear, we have a responsibility to the rest of the state, not just to us. We have a responsibility to our voters too. We had just one brave gentleman come back, come to us the other day, really worried about the tax impact in, for, for himself. And you know, we can't, we, we had part of our responsibility is to make our decisions and make our business more sustainable. What gives me hope right now is the conversations that we're having in our configuration study, the conversations that we're having as aligning all our common, our core beliefs, right? That we're moving towards that direction if, you know, if we had m more time, or so, I think that we need to cut more. We don't need to cut less. What we're cutting right now is the burden of money. We're gonna be, if we hit this cap three years in a row, we'd basically be 15 years behind of where we need to be. Not, you know, and that's exaggerated, right? But we are, we're not making sustainable change to do what we've been saying to do, that long-term planning that we're gonna be budgeting year round so that hopefully once we do all this configuration changes, and by configuration I don't mean like necessarily it's gonna close all our small schools, you know, whatever we decide to do that is best for all our kids, we gotta be able to to budget so that we're not having this conversation every year, just thinking about you know doing lots of cuts uh, every year. That's what we're going to be looking at next year. You know, next year if this year is hard, next year is going to be even harder. And and this budget cuts right now represent the bare minimum that we can do as a district. You know, and and I mean that with all respect. I know that you guys work really hard on this. Is is the bare minimum that we can do as a district because of the way we're configured right now and because we're all having these important conversations and sharing it with, you know, we need to have enough public input for those configuration changes too, but I, I'm, I'm thankful for all the work that you guys have done. I'm, I'm ready to support uh, uh, this budget. We would have, a, a, we need to give some guidance to our, we don't have enough for, but we have, um, enough board members ready to, to support the budget as it is. I don't feel comfortable sending our administrators to sort of present a draft to bringing back this, this guts. I don't think that that's what, I, I don't think that would be responsible for us, but I'm looking to thumbs up from you guys saying that, you know, we're. So does that mean you're looking for us to make another suggestion to, to, to Think about more cuts? Or? No, I think we're too, you know, that's, you know, if I had a magic wand, I definitely would want more cuts. I think mm -hmm. this is the responsible thing to do where we are right now, but to think about bringing back <coughs> cuts is just not, is, is that what we're asking? <coughs> Go no. ahead, Daniel. I don't think I'm asking for a modification of the budget. I guess a um, a second round of discussion okay. prior to voting, mm -hmm. I think I would really appreciate. I would also appreciate if if Suzanne's able to do it. Um, tax rate projections 
like we did last with last year's presentation based mm -hmm. on a couple different values of houses. And I'd also like to see the full equalized tax rate rather than this 5% cap, just for a frame of reference, what 10.52% mm. tax rate increase would look like it, as part of a brief presentation prior to voting. And at our next meeting, it would be like it would be the board <coughs> taking ownership. You know, After that meeting, the board will take ownership of, of the budget. Sure. But Suzanne, can you remind me, 1% was, was it 300000 No, was it? 1% on the tax rate, I don't have that right now. I don't know that number. Okay. On the tax rate or the, on the budget? I don't remember. You're talking about the tax rate. Net local spending, it was about 300000 Okay, That's thank like you. You're talking about that. It's 30 <laughs> so I thought Daniel's suggestions were good, and also we'll obviously have the CLA numbers we next time, right? so yeah. we can have another round of discussion <laughs> yeah. Yeah. with some new information. Yeah. I do have a quick reflection to add, if that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't want to speak for everyone, so I'm going to practice using my statements. Nice, And just name that there is grief in this process, you know, to what Joshua is naming, like there's so much beyond our control. There's so many emotions and feelings that are coming into play here, and I think that we can't deny that there's cognitive dissonance because we care so much about nurses and counselors and our kids getting their mental health and physical health needs more than ever because of the pandemic and all the additional stressors and trauma that families have gone through. Um, and to Flora's point, trusting the administrators, you know, through the rounds of conversation and looking at the data and looking at their assessment of what the needs are and how they're diversifying supports to meet the needs. I think we need to come to terms and reach a place of acceptance with ourselves for acting potentially and, and making a decision that symbolically is antithetical to the values that we mm -hmm. hold. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, that the levels of complexity and nuances in how the system is structured makes it so that both can happen, that the needs can get met, and that we're cutting counselors and nurses, potentially. It's perfect. I don't think I can top that. So mm -hmm. we, we are going to move into our next agenda item. If I can get the agenda here, thank you, everybody, for <coughs> hard work. Thank you. Don't feel like you have to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. We'll never go. We all want to, but we won't. So, then moving to the uh, board budget communication plan, the steering committee. The steering committee met, and we just want to give you, we had a meeting with Ben today, we want to give you a quick update of the flyer that we talked about sending with the steering committee. Yeah. Yeah. Just real quick, the, one of the things we talked about is um, last year the board chose, and it was successful, I think, to send cards to everyone, all of you remember the QR code for the annual report instead of printing the entire annual report. I think that worked really well. We had very few, if any, requests for have them mailed. Um, this year, the steering talked about instead of mailing a card that just has a QR code to mail a budget flyer so that when they receive that mailing, it has like the Cliff's Notes version of the budget. So that's right there. Everyone will get that. Still will have the QR code, so if they want to put a thick annual report, they'll still get it. We met with Ben Merrill today. He said, He's our sort of communications graphic person. He said that sounds like a good idea. He had some good thoughts about what to put in it, so we're working on that piece. Do we also have several copies at town offices? Always. Yes. In Always. fact, okay. even with the reduced number of printing we did last year, we probably still printed too many. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they're at town offices, they're at all the schools. And it's and in our office. Yeah. And we, there is always a note on the flyer that if you want us to mail you one, we will. 
Yeah, because it gives information. As opposed yeah, to exactly. We'll have a little bit yeah. more information for yeah. people that won't go into the QR code. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we'll see the difference between a trifold and a gatefold. Yes. <laughs> that gives us a little more room depending on that. Yeah. And is it possible to even have like a a poster or a flyer that does have the QR code that could it be would, posted it, all it over? Will have it there. Will, yes, he also said that the mailer will be the trifold with the QR code and he could make different portions of it into one pagers. Like I was just thinking if on the school door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you yep. you know, or yep. at the mail post office or something. You know what I mean? Yep. That's good. <coughs> yeah. You don't have a post office. No. Yeah, we don't know. Post ups yeah. in the other. We don't ever live either. Yeah. That's one part, it's and then we'll talk. We had some creative ideas today when we were meeting about ways to do outreach for a community and maybe, you know, have divide us in groups of three and go to a, <coughs> a way of explaining the budget and separating board members across mm -hmm. communities and having other ways to, you know share the budget with our community, that necessarily mean having the entire budget work mm -hmm. together. Once we agree on a budget, we'll have more conversations on that. Uh, the mail-in ballots for uh, Washington Center, I'm just waiting for a text from, I'm assuming that by now, Berlin is said yes. I'm gonna leave that to the end of the meeting to make a motion, just because I need, I haven't checked my text right now. Uh, Winooski Valley made a motion. <coughs> Page 23. Okay. I move the <coughs> point. I move that we allow Megan to sign the Medusa yes, Valley Agreement. <laughs> I'm like looking that's for the right word. Second. Yeah. Thank you. You got that, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Can you oppose? Heading none, the motion mm -hmm. carries. It's for dinner relation, page 24. I'm going to let you leave that, Kari. Yeah, so um, starting on page 13 of the packet is information about our superintendent performance evaluation, one of the most important things we do all year. And so the next steps in this process will be um, a survey will go out right after the new year, and you'll have a little over a month to complete it online. It's probably repeat for most of you, but it's not a yeah, long survey. The rubric is in here. Um, take a look at it and um, we give you plenty of time to fill it out. We will compile it. Um, we will share the results with you all, with the board in executive session, have a discussion, and then we'll sit down with Vegas at some point and, and uh, um, speak with her about it. So that's the process. Very important. Um, our goal is always to have 100% participation in the survey. So it takes probably 20 minutes, half an hour to do a good job of it. And then the next one we added, uh, we, we need to appoint a clerk. Is, uh, you guys all receive a general designation from, from the board. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so, and Jonas was a great board member. We thank him at this board meeting for his service to the board and to the community. It, it, we're not going to look into trying to interview and appoint a board member right now because we're so right. close to the election. We're in the middle of the budget. Uh, so we will look for somebody to run for uh, the Worcester open seat. But for right now, we need um, a clerk for, for our board. Can I just ask a question about um, Jonas's sort of other roles he played for the board committee membership and anything like that? Are yeah. that or steering committee membership, are those things that need to be? Mm -hmm address or reassign in its absence. Mm -hmm. That's what we would do once we... Once they're in. Once we have a... I, I was just assuming whether we appoint the clerk would assume the roles for, for right now and that they own, we, we're done with negotiations, which was the committee that he, okay. he and Diane and Joshua and Chris. Forgetting. Chris. So I'd like to nominate Joshua Sevitz to be our clerk. Okay. Second. All right. Okay. You accept the nomination? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right. We've got Thank congratulations. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like when I got a point. There's a 15-page report. I wasn't sure. Just wait. So the, the one thing that I do want to, uh, and if you guys are OK, it would, it would make, because he would take position also in the steering committee. We don't have that many more steering committees before the, the reorganization. It, it would mean that uh, Romney would have uh, two seats on that on that committee, but I think uh, it's is, okay. Is the clerk automatically a member of the steering committee? Is that what you're the, saying? The clerk, yeah, yeah, so the, the, the vice chair, clerk, and chair are automatic members okay. of the steering committee. Yeah, okay. And, See you with that. Okay. I think it would be to just make a change. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, moving right into the finance committee. Ursula, award yes. Doty generator bid. I move that we approve awarding the Doty generator project contract to Local Electric LLC in an amount not to exceed $81,400. Second. Thank you, Zach. Any discussion? Yay. This Yay for refrigeration and emergencies <laughs> and not right, food yeah. and <laughs> reducing stress for their community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yes. Would, would this power the entire building? Yes. In, in the, okay. Yeah. So the plan is that in the interim we're gonna we're going to purchase a smaller generator for this winter because the the mm -hmm. one that you're awarding this bid for won't be installed in time for this winter. Okay. That smaller generator would then be transferred to the central office mm -hmm. once this larger generator is installed at Doby. So we're um, buying two generators? <clears throat> we're going to buy a small one, like a cheap one, just to keep the freezers yeah. and, and also that, to keep it so that... Freezer? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I'm just, I'm just yeah. thinking of emergency shelter, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. um, because uh, if it powered the entire building... Yes, and that's the intent with the larger with this generator. Okay. The smaller generator, which is much less cost, okay. like in the seven nine seven to nine hundred dollar range, but then be tricky. Really? It's generator cost plus installation. Oh, seven, um, seven to nine hundred. Seven to nine hundred. Yeah, it's just to, it's, it's only going to do, do the generator. It's only going to do the freezer. Seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just to do the freezer. Like a buy school. Then you transfer it over to the central <laughs> office so that if we lose power there, we wouldn't have things freezing up on us there to protect the asset there. And the town has potential for uh, applying for a grant that might offset the cost of this mm -hmm. uh, generator after it's not figured into it right now okay. but it might be an added bonus for us. Well those things they would signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Any extensions here now with the motion gets approved three qualified criteria for security mm -hmm. project. I'm I move the board establish the recommended pre qualification criteria that contractors must meet to be included on a select list of pre-qualified bidders for the 2024 security system project. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Any questions? Can I just ask a quick, quick question that this raised for me? What's the threshold below which we don't approve capital investments? Yeah. Or maybe they're not called capital. Is it 20,000? No, now it's 40. We don't go out to bid for 40,000. 40, 40, yeah. And But board authorization? Board authorization comes when we want to use the money from that capital fund. You all have the authority to utilize the capital fund money. Any capital fund expen expenditure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So when we're using that fund, we get your permission. As and well. the pre-qualification <laughs> comes when something we think is going to go over $500,000. And our definition of a capital is, is $5,000? $5,000 and a useful life of more than a year. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Right. Six point three. First that. I move that the board pre-qualifies Farrington Construction Company Incorporated and in EF Wall and Associates as bidders for the WCUUSD 2024 combined capital projects. Thank you. A second. 
second. Any questions? Do they meet all the criteria? They do. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Post vote question. Post vote question. Okay, yeah. hurry up. No, okay. okay, so um, does that mean others cannot bid or? Correct. They weren't pre qualified. Okay, so the so these are the only so would these are only going to be the only bidders on the project? Yeah, if they choose to bid, they, they still could decide not to bid. Okay. Which does mean that I will have to petition the AOE for a bid waiver because I didn't get three bids. Okay. Well, each time then. Anytime we don't get three. So if we're bid. only pre qualifying two, you're going to have to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is a report. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm like looking at you and like, yes, yeah, sorry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you just want for you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, so the FY24 fund balance projections for the capital fund, uh, sharing with you the beginning balance for the capital improvement fund this year was $4,180,517. Computer's going to die. Oh, shit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, I got it. I'm going to go. <laughs> Um, we are projecting that the ending capital improvement fund balance for FY24 is now $1,943,950, which also includes a $629,000 reserve that's set aside for East Montpelier because they came in with money uh, into the merger. All of the other schools have utilized the, the money that they brought into the merger with, um, so we're still holding that aside. The projected capital improvement fund balance available for future projects at the at the end of this fiscal year after that reserve is 1.3 million. Uh, this is an improvement of 890 thousand dollars, which is the based on the 1.9 million dollars uh, in the projected fund balance for May of 23. So in May, I was projecting that it would end much lower. Uh, primarily, the parking lot project coming in under budget was the biggest driver, but the overall uh, budgets at EMES Boiler, the U32 Boiler Project, the Callus Boiler Project, uh, the U32 HVAC projects, all coming in under budget. Mm. And we also received an unanticipated efficiency Vermont grant of $25,000, which offset the boiler project at Callus. We are also anticipating more from Efficiency Vermont for the U32 and East Montpelier projects, but mm. haven't received those yet, so I didn't include that. Mm -hmm. So what is the EMES money being reserved for? EMES projects. <laughs> we have a we have a few capital projects that have been um, identified, including some of the money for the security system upgrades that you just um, mm -hmm. set pre-qualification standards for. That's one of them. They've done. They just recently did the playground, uh, some door upgrades. But for right, uh, a sound system, I think. But for right now, they don't have a ton of things on their list. So is it for any capital improvement project that the reserve funds are used for, or select ones? I'm thinking uh, the boiler. We, the boiler wouldn't fall The boiler there. came out of that. They came in with more than the 600. No, I know. After it was like the, 900. Yeah, after the boiler project, right? um, it's at the 600. So the boiler project came out of the reserve for right. East Montpelier. Yeah. Okay. So and everybody right. came in with a little bit. It's just and I would say the state of Vermont has gone through all of our facilities and done a, a really thorough review and identified things that they would you know uh, recommend being fixed they've done that statewide we I, as in Chris and Bill and I were really pleased to see that almost all of the things on our capital plan were the things that they were identifying I think yeah. one or two nice. minor things that they found were added to our list and We'll take those reports and update the capital plan for this coming spring and uh, offset that. So then why is the 25... No, go ahead, Dan. Sorry, I had not seen um, Why is the 2526 budget column highlighted on this? The capital improvement plan? Is there, a, is there something special about it? Yeah. Oh, it was what she was... 43. 43. 43. 
Um, because that was the 24-25 plan, and I've shifted everything over and just haven't. So is that like that's our year, outlined it. And that's, the that's first our year of the general. Oh, I see. That's our yeah, next, next year, year that we'll be doing our planning for. But really, what should be highlighted is 24-25. Got it. Thank you. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And I noticed that what's in the budget is slightly less than our long-term planned allocation to it. Just because of what's falling in within the calendar. Yeah, with with the uh, fund balance there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I I talked to with Chris Ripley if policy would be our next item, and we were thinking of tabling policy for tonight. Oh. And we, The Stanley Doctrine of making sure we match our yeah. numbers with the kids. You had already yeah. said there were no other. What were our <laughs> you know, I have one. I have four. Yeah. Okay, no, let's just No, go ahead. I'm just. It's, um, it's the. The one that I didn't carry over yet. Yeah, I thought so. When I read the packet, I was like, I think D34 is wrong. But So on the red line, it's corrected, interestingly oh. enough. But on the next one down, where it's like the one the where you've accepted one. the clean yes, one, that number doing. did not come through. Exactly. That's the only one I have. Yeah. We'll fix We're it. not discussing the three three. Yeah, but we'll just do it then, okay? Because otherwise we might as well. Otherwise we're losing it. So the consent agenda, we're going to move it to three minutes of November 15, December 4th, and December 6th. I move we accept the, approve the minutes of November 15th, December 4th, and December 6th. Say Thank you. Did you get that, Lisa? Yeah, Kelly and Diane. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, the, okay, I'm looking for a motion to approve the board orders. The folder went around and it has enough signatures. Thank you, everybody. And now we need a motion. Do you to need a number? Or just a motion? Okay, we need a number. Does someone have the thing? Yeah, yeah, I don't have the number. Okay, here you go. Do you have it there? No, I don't. First, first, first. I do. So go ahead. I move that we approve the board orders for November 16th, 2023 through December 20th, 2023, in the total amount of $883,584.73. Did you get the number, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. Second. Was that both of them, though? That was both of them. Okay. Yeah. Warrant and the general. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Discussions, seeing no and all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right. For reflection, thank you everybody for being here. Um, it's late. It's I, I have two points to thank Jan Miller Arsenal, who's playing the role of the time because Megan and have to be here. Uh, of the uh, ghost administrator uh, from the theater uh, where you're keeping us safe. There's a ghost light that oh. stays on in the theater overnight, and Jen is our ghost light administrator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, because I feel safe that you're here. <laughs> and um, I, I brought um, almonds for you folks uh, that are prepared every Christmas, and so take a jar on your way out, please. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yes. I'm Mr. Jones. I want yes. to thank him publicly for the service mm -hmm. and the yes, uh, yes. and the verve that he brought to the board. <laughs> uh, and uh, really appreciate that, mm -hmm. that he served with us for as long as he did. Yeah. Here, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So a motion to adjourn. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. I move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Daniel mm -hmm. and Austin. And Nursa. For those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Happy holidays, everybody. Yes. 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 Yes.